All right. <laughs> only a, only a few minutes past past ten. I'm always torn on how to do this. I definitely want to get the stream on before I get started. But should I do that before ten or at ten? Hmm. I don't know if it matters, but I always wonder which one's better. Would you guys rather I start like with my camera on at ten, or should I? start at 10 and use the first 10 minutes to like do all the things I have to do before I go live. Hey, Amaze. Hey, Kudo. Sorry, I'm just uh, pontificating. I don't really know. Still still working out with, with best stream practices over here. Oh my, that is quite the hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Some cheese for you. How are things going, guys? <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna be doing uh, some ungulates of choice today for stream, uh, for our warm up sketches. You can pick any ungulate you want. You don't have to, oops, sorry, my, my horrible uh, chair situation is falling apart underneath me. I need to get a new chair. Um, oh shoot, I also need to grab my pen. I had to take my Cintiq pen home last night because my backup tablet at home is, something's wrong with the pen. I need to, I brought that today, I think too, didn't I? Shoot, did I leave that at home? crumbs. I was going to try and fix that today. I was going to even do it on stream. <laughs> Poop. Well, maybe I'll do it later because I might have to run home between now and my, my stream later today at four. So maybe we will fix the tablet pen on stream together, guys, or try. It's going to be very scary. Anyway, let me grab my pen. Um... And this is the uh, protective covering. <laughs> I... But it's at least good to know that this pen does work on my other tablet. It works with all my programs. So if I really needed to, I could stream from home. I just have to remember to bring this with me everywhere, basically. I don't want a custom tool. What are you talking about? Oh, gosh. The minute I say things are working. <laughs> all right. So these were the ungulates we've done this week so far. This is ungulate week on stream warmups. Um, yeah, so we've done horses, we've done cervids. Today, I was kind of torn. Originally, I was going to do bovine. Um, but then I started looking at, you know, all the sheep and goats yesterday. I got really excited about drawing a sheep or a goat. So I might be doing that. We'll see. Just going to remove the horse layer here. Make a new one. So, let's... Uh, Let's find some reference. I have a few options pulled up uh, for myself. Um, and for those who might might be new or watching this later, uh, typically the way that this works is I will um, post a reference picture that I'm using in Discord. You certainly don't have to use that picture. Um, I'll also have it on screen here if you prefer to follow along that way. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what I end up doing because I haven't, I haven't actually decided what which which type of ungulate I'm making. I'm just making sure my pen works first because I was a little worried I'd grab the wrong one, but I think this is the right one. It's not making the weird click. Oh, hey, Sloppy Salamander, what's going on? Good to see you. Yeah, oh, thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> Welcome to the sketch stream. Feel free to sketch along if you want or just hang out. Don't forget the tunes. Wait, there's no tunes? There should be tunes. Ah, shoot. Apparently my desktop audio was muted. So my whole intro was very quiet. Bummer. Well, I guess there's no other choice but to start over my stream playlist because I like some of those songs. So, uh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Amaze. I told you, I think I messed up my sound yesterday. So I there's probably some weird settings. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it was off. Sorry, I had to check my stream starting screen. I'm doing, I'm doing good. Uh, wait, hold on. I personally try to do as much prep work as possible before the hour hits so I can go live the second best. Personal preference. Okay, that's fair. Um, I, yeah, I just, I wonder, because like a lot of streamers I follow, they do, they do like a, like a stream starting soon, like window at their stream time. So I just never know what people prefer. Because like, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
Because, yeah, I feel like I should be starting at 10 as well. But then I'm like, well, maybe I should do... It also gives me a little extra time on those days that I have things going on before 10 a.m., which with my stupid medical history seems to be more common than I'd like. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm still thinking about it, so I don't know. Um, I'll, I might play around with a few different things. I think I did it the other way last week. I don't know which one I prefer. Because it always... I need the time anyway, because it always takes me some time to... Um, like post things online that I'm live because I haven't figured out how to use Buffer yet to schedule that for me. <laughs> anyway, which I still haven't posted on Instagram that I'm live, but all right, let's find some reference. I'm gonna let you guys look at these while I look for reference here. <laughs> this is what we're gonna be doing. Um, yeah, but anyway, good to see you around, Sloppy Salamander. Oh, I don't know about Brilliant. Brilliant's an overstatement for sure. He's, he's very kind. I also can't quite figure out my lighting situation, guys. I swear it's not that bright in my studio. I'll close that so when the rooster crows, it doesn't show up on stream. Anyway, okay. So we're doing ungulates. So I think I'm gonna do the ones I kind of pulled up yesterday, of like the four that I looked at. Um, I think I wanna do a big horn sheep just cause they're fun. They got really fun shapes. So we'll start there. Oh, I made a, oh, I forgot to tell you, Amaze and everyone else, I made a, a command yesterday. So if you want to use any of my references, there's, they're all going to be organized there on Pinterest. So I've got a whole, I might have to break up my ungulates folder. I realized yesterday that is way too broad of a category for how many reference pictures I tend to have. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to have to break those up a little bit, but um, yeah, let's start with a sheep. In the Caprine family, so there's all kinds of really fun goats and sheep, right? I think I want to start with, and since this is free choice, I'm probably not going to, I'm going to pick a little bit more dynamic poses just because I like to be challenged. Um, and it's really good practice for me. Plus, I feel like you can see the anatomy a lot better when an animal is kind of in an action pose. I love this pose. I might just pull this one just because it's cool. There we go. There's one option. But I was also, ooh, here's a nice one. But I was also looking at um, like wildebeest and sable antelope. They're really cool. And then of course there's like a ton of really awesome like ibex and stuff. All kinds of really neat uh, goats and sheep out there. I don't know, yeah. Really fun, really fun horn shapes. I just, I kind of wanted to find cool horns. And then there's like Markor, which have really awesome shapes as well. Here's a dramatic boy for us. <laughs> uh, that is not a big horn sheep. I forget what these are called. Shoot, I need to edit that pin so that I know. Um, some kind of ibex, I'm sure. Oh, here's a better version of that picture. Mm -hmm. right. And last option for images to draw is going to be, I want to do like a fighting, like a headbutting picture, just because they have the coolest um, body shapes when they kind of rear up like that, especially these big horn sheep. They're just like so powerful looking. Here's a good one. All right, neat, 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 neat. Oh, I kind of like that first one still. All right, <laughs> handsome fella, I know, trust me. I got a little sucked in yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm just gonna stare at beautiful animals all day, I guess, that's what I'm doing. I did that for like an hour after stream. Plus I was organizing my Pinterest folder. Um, and I also have, uh, per suggestion I got on stream yesterday, I made a schedule alert or whatever those are called, um, command, a schedule thingy. <laughs> anyway, I'll try and keep that updated. Um, but that's kind of what we're doing right now. Sandbagging. What are you talking about? Not sandbagging. I don't even know what that means. Sounds negative. <laughs> that's a good point. Anyways, there's probably not a lot of dynamic photos of 
some animals because nobody wants to be near a moose when it's being dynamic. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody got real close to these buffalo though. Holy cow. Talk about dynamite. Ooh, look, at those, look at those haunches. That's just pure muscle right there. See, there's too many options. I think, I think I'm not going to be this broad in the future. I think ungulate is too broad of a, of a term for me because now I'm just going to sit here and look at animal pictures with you guys and be indecisive. So if anyone has preferences, what would you like to see me draw? There's also camels. <laughs> uh, shoot, man, there's just too many great options. Oh, hey, Charlie's Dragon. Oh, good to see you here. Just went, waiting for someone to draw a whale for today. I know, I know, I, I did think about that because I remember having that conversation on a paleontologizing stream. That blew my mind for sure when I found that out. I was like, what? DNA is crazy. And it's so cool that we can like verify stuff like that. Gurnuk are really funny. That's true. Those like long neck antelope guys. We had those at the zoo uh, where I grew up. I really, I don't think I have any. Do I have any Gurnuk references? Surely, surely if they're in the antelope folder. I don't have any green Wow. I do have some really fun um, oryxes, though. Ooh, look at this beauty. We might have to draw this guy. It's looking kind of deary, but really pretty. Love those horns. Um, green are fun. Sable antelope are fun. Kudu are fun. There's so many fun creatures. Maybe I'll do a paint, uh, a painted kudu. How are you doing today, Charlie's Dragon? I know, kudu are so cool. Uh, so is this a, I think this is a kudu, right? Um, there's also one that looks similar called a water buck. I think water buck have the shaggy. They look super cervity. Like if I didn't know any better, I would think that they were deer. It looks just like an elk with horns. <laughs> like it's crazy. Um, just a body type that works, I guess, right? Kernuk. Oh, here's a huge chart of ungulates. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I'm going to link this, this image because it's just too big to be, you can't appreciate it. Uh, on stream, but look at this, look at this chart of all these different deer. These are just cervids. Well, here's a, here's not a non cervid There's a few antelope in here too, um, but it's mostly cervids, but it's just like a fun little size ref. Um, I don't see a water buck in here, but look at all these shapes. Look at all these horns and antlers. We did learn about horn and, or excuse me, antler anatomy yesterday. So if anybody is watching this now and is struggling with that, I found this really great, uh, really great guide for drawing antlers that I think worked really well. All right, so for those who've never seen a Gurnuk, prepare yourselves. These are like alien antelope. They have really tiny heads. Some of these pictures feel exaggerated. And they, they can stand up on their hind legs like crazy alien deer. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, that's kind of an unfortunate one. Um, but they look insane. Look at these faces. Look at this. These are the most stretched out little creatures. I love them. Look at this guy. He's just being a capricious animal. He's got a little tooth. You guys see his little tooth? <laughs> I don't know why it went all the way over there. Anyway. Oh, they're so pretty very funny little faces like i feel like i would draw that and it would just look like i made a mistake you know like there's some animals where it's just like the anatomy is so bonkers that if you're not familiar with the animal you're just gonna think it's like a mess up <laughs> look at them they're so good i know they're so good <laughs> does not care about our categories that's true ungulates have hooves well except when they're sucked into giant flippers <laughs> yeah they're great i might have had too much caffeine oh no well it sounds like you got a lot of energy to sketch along then huh <laughs> water buck have kind of bullseye on their butts oh that's funny i saw some uh, water buck in person the first time i'd ever heard of a water buck was when i was in rwanda and uh saw them all walking around i also saw a lot of heart beast there which i'd never seen a heart beast before either there's a lot of really unique um, a lot of really unique uh, fauna in Africa for sure. But all right, if I was gonna draw one of these, <laughs> they just they look so alien. I'm not sure if I want to draw one. I just they are fun though. 
Yeah, a couple of times. Um, I've always wanted to go to like South Africa or like Kenya to do like the big safaris, but I think I might, oof, I don't know. I'm really tempted by this kudu guys, but I do want to, I do want to draw like a, I want to start with like a big burly, a big burly servant of some kind, I think. I think I'm going to start with this, this, um, this one right here. So let's pick, go ahead and pick. And we have more time. So I'm going to start my warm up timer. For anybody who's new here, that's typically how I do it. You can do whatever you want, but the whole goal of this is to um, start your day off with 30 minutes of sketching, especially if you're an art type. I'm gonna turn that down slightly so I don't get dinged. Um, yeah, it's, it's helpful for us art types, you know, to start our day off, warm up those art muscles and whatnot. Um, yeah, this is a really small picture. But we're probably just gonna draw really small. Oh yeah, I gotta write my our, my little mantra up here. This helps me when I start feeling secure when I can't draw and I'm streaming in front of people. Uh, the mantra is, we're just getting the bad drawings out, guys. So it's okay. It's okay to be bad. <laughs> That's what this is for. We're getting the bad drawings out of the way. So that we can draw good drawings later. <laughs> That's the goal. Okay. And then if anybody wants to, if anyone's on Instagram especially, uh, I've decided to call these right now anyway, this little series, uh, Casey Sketch Along. So if you have if you tag anything with that tag, eventually I'll see it on Instagram when the algorithm decides to show it to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll do my best to share those. Um, it should be fun. And speaking of Instagram, I still still haven't posted there. I need to go post a story at least really fast. So let's uh let's sketch this guy. Um, I tend to go a little faster. If anybody wants to spend the whole thirty minutes uh, just kind of refining a single image, that is totally fine. But for me, I get more out of uh, finding the gesture lines, right? Like finding the movement and figuring out the form. So I'm like looking at these really big husky shapes right here. And that's what we're drawing. So, um, yeah. But everyone has different goals with this kind of stuff, right? Like some people are trying to get really good at drawing a specific thing. Um, some people just want to warm up their art muscles. I'm trying to do both, I guess. I want to. I want to learn. I want to grow my visual library. Um, yeah. If anybody is uh, wanting to get into art, this is the best way to improve and also to learn how to draw from imagination. I know I've, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but you can't you can't draw from imagination well until you know what things actually look like. Once you know what something actually looks like, then you can abstract it um, and kind of take liberties and do all of that. But if you're not familiar with the basics, um, anytime you try to abstract it or make it cartoony or make it kind of stylized, um, any kind of gaps in your anatomy, gaps in your understanding are gonna show most of the time. Even people like Picasso had very good draftsmanship skills. <laughs> so if Picasso thought it was important and all he did was dots, as they say, then, uh, you know, it's probably good for us too. But seriously, if you haven't seen uh, some of Picasso's draftsman stuff, go look it up. He did a lot of really good Really good drawings. Clearly knew what he was looking at. I love this sharp angle here. You can really see the anatomy of the uh, hind leg right there. Don't get you started on Picasso. <laughs> I'm just saying, Amaze, if, if you think all he did was dots, you're in for a shock. A lot of people think uh, think that was he just started doing that one day, but that was the end result of a long journey during a time of a lot of modern art upheaval. He spent a lot of his career doing uh, very realistic art. I won't say that I'm a huge fan of modern art, but I'd, I'm not going to say it's invalid either. I think the best, uh, yeah, 
well, I don't, I don't know if I want to get into the conversation about modern art. It can be kind of, kind of controversial here in the art, in the art world. <laughs> Going to get some lunch? Oh, that's right. You're in a totally different time zone. I forgot. I'm, this is around your lunchtime, isn't it? Well, hey, go enjoy your lunch, Kudo. And if you feel like uh, sketching some ungulates on your lunch break, oops, speaking of, I forgot to drop this in, uh, shoot, I forgot to drop this in Discord. Hold on. Also, I am way zoomed out. That's better. I thought that was really small. Let me go put this in. Two hours ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. Pollock. Um, yeah, same thing with Pollock. Uh, Pollock was, I think I was saying dots, but they're both, they have the same story, frankly. Pollock was also a really good draftsman. Um, I think I was thinking of Pollock, though, you're right. Uh, Pollock, Picasso, look, I just woke up a little bit ago. I had a rough night. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna give myself some slack there. My brain knew what I was talking about. I was picturing Pollock. But Picasso also was a good draftsman. I can't quite tell. That's the problem with these blurry photos. I can't quite tell what I'm looking at with the anatomy. Um, probably need to find a slightly clearer reference picture for the next one. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you really lose those skills, to be honest, but yeah, we can talk about that another time. We can have a, a good old fashioned art, art debate. Like I said, I'm, I don't think I'm the biggest fan of, of like the modern art movement in general, but um, I, I understand, I understand why it happened and I understand why it's valid. So we'll just leave it at that for me anyway. It's just not my cup of tea, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Everyone has different taste. That's the beauty of art, right? Some people are looking for conceptual things and some people are looking for very, very tangible uh, draftsmanship, which is fine. Happy to live in a time where that's the most serious argument I need to worry about today. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. All right. So I am thinking of doing citations though. Uh, for one of these because I do I feel like I haven't drawn enough in a while I used to draw whales a lot more I think when I was younger and I just kind of haven't in a long time I think I yeah I think I've just gone through some other other periods of interest but I think I am going to do a cetacean stream where we do warm-ups that are all you know whales porpoises dolphins uh, those sorts of critters even though yes I know they are technically un ungulates if you want to get super technical I think I did his head too small. It's a little too short. All right, well, it's not the prettiest sheep I've ever done, but that's okay. I think I might be doing, um, I'm already thinking about my Christmas card for this year. I always do a Colorado animal for my Christmas cards. Um, I kind of want to start practicing now. <laughs> Give him a little more booty. Looks like he has a little more booty. Okay. I'm gonna just quickly rough in some of these rocks because I also want to practice my uh, environments a little bit. And uh, 
I definitely, we're gonna do a stream also where it's just like different types of rock. I feel like there's so many different textures you can get in a rock. And I know I am guilty of always drawing the same type of rock, like every single time I draw something. Look at these little sheep butts. Um, if anyone ever comes to Colorado and you wanna see a bighorn sheep, I can tell you a great place uh, south of Denver, like, like it's in the Denver area technically, where you are almost guaranteed to see a sheep every single time. And they are wild. Um, they're very accustomed to people, so they don't run away. But uh, yeah, it's a cool place called Waterton Canyon. If anybody's ever in the area, check out Waterton Canyon. It's like a six mile walk along a very level road. Um, but I've never gone more than half a mile before I saw a sheep. So they're pretty, pretty cool critters. All right, we're gonna stop right there before I get too caught up in the uh, rick, craggy rock stuff. Make a quick insta post. Mm -hmm. Too hard, yeah, no worries. No worries. I wasn't as good about uh, posting ahead of time that I was doing this today. So I haven't posted like half the places I normally post. I clearly hit a nerve here with you, Amaze. I'm so sorry. Ah. I'm going to do it this way. Sorry, I'm uh, making an Instagram post because I forgot to post there and some other places, but I'm just going to post here for now. Clipboard. Shoot, do I not have it anywhere? Okay, okay, great. There it goes. Okay, let's do another. Moose antlers need a lot more mass to them. Yeah, they do. They're very heavy palmade, palmated. I'm not sure what the correct way of saying that would be. Uh, antlers. All right, we've done our sheep. I'm gonna keep, I might just do this with this antelope. I'm gonna save that picture. I do wanna look at some bison. These bison are super cool. I do like the idea of doing like a charging bison though. Actually, let's do one more sheep study because I wanna I, I wanna see it from a different angle too. Close that because I'm not gonna use that. I just think it's cool. It's a cute little garnock. Where'd you go? There you are.
Oops. Look at that massive animal though. Like, I know they're not as big as some creatures, but for like pound for pound, that is a lot of muscle on this animal. Oh, holy, holy cow. So just love the shape of those horns. Uh, I feel like I might do a stream. I was thinking about doing um, uh, some studies that are like parts of animals, right? So like parts that are like unique features that people often struggle to draw. So like horns, antlers, bat wings, like wait, right, just straight up feathered wings, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think that one might be coming up sooner rather than later because I find especially for me who tends to doodle a lot of creature design. I feel like the more I know about like bits and bobbles and how things can work, uh, the more fun it can be to kind of, you know, tweak that. Know what I can add. Here's a bison power ranger in a way. That's so funny. I had no idea. Did they have like a whole North American animal? a series of them. Right, I'm going to exaggerate this slightly. Um, I've been doing a lot of direct copies, but I kind of want to play with the shape a little bit more. So if, if things look exaggerated, it's on purpose with this one. Just playing. Man, look at that. Whatever muscle that is. Is that the back muscle. I don't know. It's massive though. They have such, uh, there has to be such a structure on this skull to withstand this kind of battering, you know? Uh, not specifically, he was part of a more generalized cool animal team. <laughs> Are they still making that series? I'm, I'm assuming that they are, for as much as I hear you guys talk about them on uh, Like With Ryu. What's the, uh, what's the other, the other, like, power, what are they called? Like, there's like a genre, a name for that genre, right? Super Sensei? Is that what it is? Person. I don't know what it is. Super, super something. Sensei's teacher. So it's not that. I don't know what it is. There's a name though. Anyway. So I know what's the other one? Cayman Rider? I'd never heard of that until you talked about it. I'm very out of touch with uh, things like that. Pop culture in general, obviously, but. Senpai? Is it Senpai? I don't remember. Uh. 
tokusatsu. All right, I'm very wrong. <laughs> what is that? What am I thinking of? I feel like somebody was talking to me about this. Maybe I just, I, I have a bad tendency of bad, of like misunderstanding completely what people are trying to tell me sometimes. Not on purpose, just because my brain will be like, oh, that's what's happening. And then I have to ask for a lot of clarity. I feel like it's getting worse, actually. <laughs> Brain's just like, hey, we're going to jump to a conclusion here. It's going to be really hard for you to correct it. Again, just getting old. Maybe that's just what happens. Maybe that's why people become crotchety. Like it's just they become very like self-assured of of what they're assuming is true. <laughs> becoming crotchety. Oh no, help! All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tone down the muscle here. It's a little it's a little a little bull, a little bullish. Still, it's actually I guess I didn't exaggerate it that much. I kind of want to do just for fun a really quick uh hold on, we're gonna play with this it's just such a good good shape bum, bum, bum. i'm sorry i know a lot of these songs played yesterday i haven't apparently i only uh moved some of my music over to this computer so i'm kind of limited but i tried to add a few more last night in fact let's put it on random so at least it plays in a different order Wait, why did it stop? There we go. I'm telling you guys, audio and me are not friends these days. So when I talk about like drawing from imagination or abstracting reality, um, you can kind of like emphasize various things, right? Um, you're playing with shape and form. Once you know where everything kind of goes, like I can know, okay, I'm exaggerating that muscle and I'm exaggerating this back thing, back thing, like the withers, uh, this back muscle here. I'm going to make the legs look small because anytime you have little legs and big beefy body, it just implies power and strength, right? So this would be like an exaggerated study, right? Like I'm still looking at the reference and I'm still sort of, uh, yeah, still sort of like taking it all in, but it's more uh, just exaggerating those features. But it helps that I just drew it for real because then I can like, I'm going to make his eyes closed because I think that's funny. And I'm going to open his mouth like he's screaming. <laughs> I don't know, I have fun with stuff like this. Reminds me of, uh, have you guys all seen Brother Bear by chance? There's like a scene where they basically have this going on uh, with some uh, bighorn sheep. Oh my gosh, hey, it's Babe Ross. You guys, I just met Babe last night. I was watching her stream. Um, we're just drawing ungulates today. <laughs> I've been doing a warm up stream uh, series this month. So uh, here's what we did yesterday. Oh no, that was the other day, hold on. This is what we did yesterday. Uh, cervids were yesterday. We're doing just some anatomy studies, trying to level up, you know? And uh, yeah, did equines earlier this week. So it was the week before we did big cats and 
birds of prey and then on the wednesday we combine them into a griffin i didn't really do a combination one this week we might do that again though it was pretty fun maybe we'll do like a dragon one one week where we learn like the pieces of the dragon and you get to make your own i don't know but uh the whole idea i think i was talking about this last night actually the whole idea is just to uh give me some accountability to do this because i always mean to start my day with warm-up sketches and i just never do <laughs> so this this makes me kind of work out the bad drawings right like it says right here but anyway, um, you guys should go follow Babe. She was working on uh, some gouache painting last night, which was really cool. It's what drew, drew me to her stream. Um, very fun. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I think I'm behind on chat here, hold on. Uh, Super Syntax, that's what I was trying to think of. Yes, 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 that's what I was thinking of. Um, the only Japanese, I know, right? Kawaii, Senpai, what's the other one? Uh, I don't know, there's others. The one they say when they eat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Uh, if you put wheels between the legs of the ram, it would be a motorcycle animal. That's true. Hold on. Maybe I'll put him on a motorcycle. He kind of looks like he's riding one. <laughs> but anyway, we're posting these in uh, Discord. Anybody who draws long, feel free to. Hey, Circe. Good to see you. Ouch. Um... Yeah, it's going good. Oh, thank you. We're just, uh, yeah, doing doing some studies. Thanks for the thanks for the shout out, Amaze. Appreciate that. How are you doing? Thanks for popping in. I really appreciate uh, the encouragement yesterday. It was really nice of you. All right, we're gonna. I don't know how to draw motorcycles though. This is this is my fear. Who said that? Was that Charlie's Dragon? The guy's talking to their Echo. Yes, <laughs> I'm glad you know what I'm talking about, Sloppy Salamander. Uh, shoot, motorcycle. Okay. I guess I should probably just get the nervousness about drawing vehicles out of the way now. We are going to do a vehicles warm up series, guys, and it's going to, I'm just preparing myself emotionally because I'm going to be terrible at it. I'm going to be very insecure about drawing it on stream. So let's see. I'm going to look up motorcycle wheelie because this guy looks like he's a. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know about this. You're right, he does kind of already look like a motorcycle, doesn't he? Maybe I'll do a paint over after. Just like a quick... <laughs> I see what you mean, though. Like, draw the wheel here. That would be funny. Oh my gosh, this is so intimidating. How do you even motorcycle? <laughs> Uh, this is what happens. I'm just so easily, easily talked into things, especially when I'm half awake. Only four hours of sleep underneath me. Yeah, because then I can draw his little feet down here, give him like a headlight eyes, <laughs> little little rubber bits on his on his horns. <laughs> I don't know. It's all the machinery bits, though, that come on the motorcycles, right? It's like instead of ribs, you could have these little whatever these are. See, that's the other thing. I don't even know what I'm looking at here on a motorcycle. We were talking about an artist uh, on Discord, though, that I followed that used to do like, uh, I really want to find those. I am going to look for those after stream, probably. I think they're on a hard drive here. I still have like all my old files from when I was in high school. So I'm sure that's when I found it. There we go. There's... <laughs> There's the terrible. What what have, what have you done? I feel like I'm kind of drawing a like Power Ranger vehicle, like in the process of Power Ranger transforming or something. Speaking of Cayman Rider and all the folks who do the things, I'm being really descriptive. I know. Um, wow, I am so rusty. People. Everything that's not an animal. Where do you think the feet should go? I guess we'll just put little feet things down here. I don't know. This makes no sense. <laughs> this is what you wanted, right, Charlie's Jack? <laughs> oh my gosh. How ridiculous. Don't they have exhaust pipes? Hold on. Needs a little exhaust pipe. Boop. Do 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 do. <laughs> His exhaust looks like hearts at the end. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
What even is this? We're getting off ta task here, guys. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate appreciate the the encouragement. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't, and that's okay. Um, we might hide that though when I eventually do the uh, screenshot for this. Uh, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, eventually we're gonna actually do like vehicles, so like cars, planes, all kinds of stuff, motorcycles, spaceships. My arch enemy because I have no idea how to draw a spaceship. To be fair, I haven't spent a lot of time drawing spaceships. Might be why. Uh, yeah. Okay. Forget you, Buffer. You were not helpful. Uh, shoot. All right, let's do, um, I want to do, I do want to do, okay, let's do either a wildebeest or a bison. I do want to do some kind of, like, bovid, because apparently, I found out yesterday when I was looking up stuff for the stream, apparently wildebeest are not antelope. <laughs> that, like, blew my mind. Apparently, they're, like, in the same category as, um, like, bovine, like cows. There's like a another branch like above bovine in the tree of life and it's like bovid bovidae or something like that so it like encompasses not just cows and cattle like yaks and bison and that kind of thing but um also encompasses like things that i thought were antelope like heart beasts and uh wildebeests and i want to say saiga antelope which if you don't or not saiga um sable antelope which if you actually if you don't know what a sable antelope is we should draw a sable antelope they are really cool looking it's like one of the coolest looking animals. It's, yeah, I love them so much. This isn't a great photo, but it's a good idea. It's like a mix between like a, it's like a horse antelope or something. It has like really, I don't know, it's got like a mane and everything. Very cool creature. And they just have such a fun shape. I wonder if orcs are orcs must be in that category too because they look really similar. Of course, that could just be. Ooh, what is this? Oh, look at this guy! Look at this wildebeest. Let's draw him. I made the decision. <laughs> oh, we got to stretch. Hold on, guys. Let's make sure we don't get carpal tunnel. Everybody, stretch. We don't want carpal tunnel. Even if you're just typing and not drawing. If you don't know what a carpal tunnel stretch is, just a, it's kind of awkward. Like, it's like, take your hand like there, like this, and then point it toward the ground and then pull your whole, like all your fingers, including your thumb toward you gently. And you should feel a stretch like right here. I think if I'm doing it right. I was told by a physical therapist that this is the best stretch for a carpal tunnel. There's other things you can do. Like you can ride the motorcycle was what I was told. It's kind of like this. Anyway, do your carpal tunnel stretches guys, it's important. Didn't know we'd be exercising while we sketch. We're, we're stretching our sketch muscles and our actual muscles today. Saga antelopes are amazing. They're crazy looking. I think I'm gonna do this uh, wildebeest though. He's pretty neat. Slide him over. Spent a lot of time looking at wildebeest last night in preparation. All right, look at what's going on in his face. I didn't realize they had so much fur on their on their face. Really cool critter. Oops. Yeah, did you finish your rock homework, babe? <laughs> yeah, sketch your size for sure. I hope I hope your homework went well. I hope you do you get graded or is this just like an online class where it's like completion? Like we just want to see that you're doing it. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't clear if it was for us like a school credit. Um, black new are we already in black boots? Yeah, apparently there's also I didn't know this till yesterday either. This is why I spent so long on oh <laughs> guys I can't I can't hang out on Pinterest. Look at this oryx. Okay, just so you know, oryx are supposed to look like this. You guys, this is just turning into animal hour. No, come here. I want to show the people. I'm just going to show you on here. Okay, look. This is what oryx are supposed to look like, right? Look at this guy. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> he 
you guys. <laughs> Why did this happen? I have to read about this. Oh, here's another one. Oh my gosh. That is going the wrong way. <laughs> it must have been injured. Yeah, that's what this says. Sometimes ant antler and horn deformities happen from injury to the the bud, like the horn bud. Oops, no, don't do that. That could be anything. I don't want that. Okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, what I was trying to tell you about was uh, apparently there's golden wildebeest and there's there's one called a king. I don't know if this is an accurate term or if this is like a like a trophy hunting term, but uh, there's one that they're calling a king wildebeest. Have you seen this before? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I had never heard of this. This again, animals blow my mind. There's so much variety. Look at these. Look at these wildebeest though. Here's my ungulate, my ungulate folder that I'm pulling refs from. Look at these. Look at they have like golden manes and like these big white patches, and then some of them are just like all gold. It's so cool. Like look at this one. I had no idea. I had no idea that this was a possibility. Like I knew there's like blue, blue wildebeest and black wildebeest. I'm gonna save this guy because he's too good. Uh, come on, there we go. You guys can look at my terrible organization skills. I'm gonna just put it in ungulate for now because I think I'm gonna have to make a whole separate folder for these guys. Um, shoot, I get distracted. Yeah, animals are crazy, but I had no idea. Like I knew that they could have this kind of variety. Like I've seen, I've seen these really pale ones um, that are really fun. And I know sometimes they have really heavy, like intense striping, but I had no idea they could be like golden. Ooh, look at that Nyla. Yeah, okay, anyway. So cool, anyway. Just learning so much, so much variety in the animal world, you know? <laughs> I really like to pinch a side antelope's nose, <laughs> but respectfully. <laughs> how, would, how would that go? I'm very curious. Black male rate are weird and by new standards. Are they? Interesting. I know, isn't that sad about his horn? It was so sad. <laughs> uh, just shows black and blue as species, but there might be color. Yeah, I mean, it could just be a color morph, you know? Um, kind of like how some, some animals can be piebald or whatever, but yeah, there's like a bunch of them though. So they, I think that it's like a, I don't know if it's like a whole species or if it's just like a type, kind of like a king cheetah. You guys ever heard of a king cheetah? It's like when a cheetah has really heavy barring instead of spotting um, like it's supposed to. And there's usually like some extra fur going on. It's some kind of gene. And so they call it a king cheetah, but it's not really a separate species as far as I know. I wonder if that's, it's probably something like that for the wildebeest, uh, I would imagine. But that's just my guess, I have no idea. I just know I, I had never seen I had never seen a golden wildebeest before, and this is helpful because I'm making a webcomic that features African animals, and so now I'm like, hmm, I kind of want to put like a like a king wildebeest in there. Just that that marking variation is is common enough that it is a thing, you know. Oh. Pardon, pardon the random music coming on right now, guys. This might be a little too sappy. I don't know if I'm listening to this right now. All right, just in George Ezra instead. All right, see, here's the problem I have, guys. I'm not, uh, I'm not studying my forms. That's, that's not what we're doing. I have to remind myself. We're looking at shape. Shape. Let's think shape. What you waiting for? I mean, I guess now that I'm drawing it, I can totally see the bovine piece. Like, yes, this this does look more bovid. Than, than, than like whatever the, whatever the name for antelope is. It starts, I don't know, I think it starts with an A, but I'm not sure. I just, uh, I just never, I just thought they were bulky antelope, you know? I just didn't think about them as not being an antelope. It just blew my mind. The things you learn, guys, the things you learn. 
Cause like, yeah, this, like this shape, this, this neck hump right here, that is like the most cow thing. <laughs> and the horns obviously are very like water buffalo-y. So yeah, I don't know why I didn't make that connection before, but it just blew my mind. But like, okay, sable antelope though, those don't look nearly as bovid. Or maybe they do. We'll have to do, we'll have to do a study of them too. I think I overemphasized this bull hump here. <laughs> I'm thinking about our bowl thing, even with these horns, though, because I feel like the horns are still kind of coming out and pointing together. Seems to be an effective stabbing, <laughs> stabbing sort of a setup. Very stabby creatures. These ungulates. Look at his beautiful tail. I think I need to find some domestic ones, yeah, for sure. Uh, King cheetahs, yeah, just a gene variation. That's what I'm thinking, yeah, for sure. You found something. Oh, what'd you find? Golden wildebeest is a breeder's variation. Okay. So it's just a, a, a recessive gene that they've pulled out, basically. What is this? Is this the, is this the buffalo one you were talking about? That, the face on the stomach aesthetic is very distracting. <laughs> I can't look away. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not getting buffalo from this if that's what this is supposed to be, other than the horns, I guess. But those also just feel like samurai horns, frankly. And it's cool design. Is that, is that what you're talking about? A uh, challenge for you once you get more comfortable with vehicles? Oh no. Yeah, no, we're not doing a mech. <laughs> It'll be a long time before I draw mech. <laughs> On the subject of funky horns, there's a cow elephant nicknamed Fang, whose herd lives within Sabi Sands Game Reserve. Oh, interesting. I wonder what happened to her. I'll have to look her up. Thank you for the heads up. I hope you're posting your sketches in the in Discord maze. I want to see. And anyone else who's sketching along too. If you if you feel comfortable. Don't feel like you have to. The whole point of this is to, uh, yeah, help us all improve. So if you want the accountability of sharing your warm-ups, go for it. I'd be happy to hold you accountable and encourage you. Mostly encourage. We try to be encouraging. Oh no, I hate when I can't see their feet. Just mysteries down here, guys. That's all we have. <laughs> there's no, there's no information. I think I made the horse, the the body too long, kind of horsey. Yeah, the rump is way too long. Let's uh, let's fix that, shall we? Got too excited about horses. There we go. That looks a little better. That might be too stumpy. Shoot, hold on. Maybe there. There, that looks better. Post of the moose. Oh, nice. Um. Working on a caribou. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's see. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to get as many of these in as I can because I just could not pick yesterday. So we're just going to do fast sketches. Um, I guess I could post these later in Discord. I'm just going to, I figure everyone's kind of picking their own probably. And if not, you can find these on my Pinterest. Okay, march down. All right, um, let's do the sable antelope next, because or a bison. Hmm, I'm torn again. I already did you. Let's close you. Don't want to save. This guy's pretty too. Did that one. All right. Uh, shoot. All right. I'm gonna say that I've been sketching for 20 minutes. We'll just call it that. All right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do these. I love this picture. I actually kind of want to color this picture, so we'll sketch it really loose. Oops. Sorry, sloppy. Who knows, uh, who knows what you said. I need to, I need my, I feel like my stream bot has been very aggressive lately. 
I didn't used to have so many issues with it. I have it on like low moderation, but maybe, uh, maybe I need to revisit that. I will uh, fix that after stream. Sorry about that. I'm sure whatever you said was fine. <laughs> Thank you, Maze, for fixing it. Uh, oh, it was a link. Oh, yeah, I used to have, I've, I've had some spam bot issues. I need to check on my link permissions. I'm not sure why it deletes all of your chats, though. That's probably something I need to change. Okay, why is this not? There it goes. We'll just draw it down here. Okay. Sorry, that took me way too long to figure out. All right, sketchy boys. Yeah, happy to see a link. I trust you. I'm sure you're fine. Oh, is this Fang? Oh, yeah, let's look at it. Do you guys want to? I'll click it and show. Oh, it's a video. Oh, my goodness. Wow, oh my gosh. Okay, here, I'm gonna mute the sound so you guys can just like, look at this elephant's tusk. Look at that right there. Ooh, I wonder how often she hurts herself. That seems really dangerous actually. I almost feel like they should tranquilize her and like saw that off. <laughs> that seems like a, like a hazard to her. I guess she, maybe she's adapted to it. I wonder how often she like accidentally bonks a baby, you know, like who's under her and she just like stabs it in the head. That's so sad. Wow. That's a great, I didn't even think about tusk, tusk growth issues. So you just helped me out a lot actually, uh, Sloppy Salamander, because I, like I said, I'm working on a graphic novel featuring um, African animals. And elephants, I feel like, are very hard to distinguish from one another in a drawing. One of my biggest fears is when I have to get to some of the big like crowd scenes or like big herd scenes, like you're not gonna be able to see the characters that I'm trying to point out. So I might, uh, I mean, I've thought about some tusk shape stuff. Like I have one that's like a very curved tusks as opposed to like the straight ones. Um, and I've got like a forest elephant versus a, a bush elephant. Those are the two main elephant characters just because they have different enough tusks that I'm hoping people can keep them straight basically. But I like the idea of having a, an elephant like this with like a mal malformed tusk. That's so interesting. I'm gonna save this and think about that later. Um, where am I gonna put this? We'll just save a watch later. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. That's really cool. Oh, but yeah, I'm gonna watch that some more. Thank you. Always looking for cool, cool things like that. Is that pink? Wait, what? Oh, the song. Yes, yeah. so I was like, the elephant wasn't pink. What are you talking about? This isn't Dumbo. <laughs> Teeth problems happen. No, it does make sense for sure. I just didn't think about, yeah, one being that misgrown, like misshapen and, and malformed. I've seen, I've seen tusk injuries that like they kind of they're kind of like lower than the other like i've definitely seen that in an elephant um but i've never seen one that bad that was crazy yeah or a small tusk i've seen that too where there's one that's really small and that's big because it didn't it didn't grow all the way yeah i just uh that's really interesting and then of course there's like the mammoth tusks that you still see every once in a while in some african elephants that are like massive massive little little <laughs> massive things that kind of almost drag the ground. I think they call those super tuskers and there's not very many of them left in the world. I think that, unfortunately, I think because of poaching that uh, that gene is being wiped off the face of the earth because all the, all the ones that carried that gene are being killed for their ivory, which does nothing. Um, it's very frustrating. I hate that that has any value. I, I wish so badly that that was not a thing. Elephants are some of my favorite animals. It makes me really sad thinking about what's going on with them. We are definitely gonna do an elephant, uh, an elephant stream one of these days. That's, that's certainly on the docket. Man, look 
at those muscles. I also love the big fuzzy arm shapes here. They're almost like gorilla arms, you know? So I'm, I'm thinking about all the anatomy that we've practiced this week, right? Like, so we have the shoulder, I can see the elbow here. It's not hard to see with that pen color. So yeah, we've got our shoulder. Um, so that's why I'm just jumping in with these big shapes here. I love, I love that little fluffy, fluffy rough. And then it has this little tiny little hoof. <laughs> it's really great. Love it a lot. Really nice. Uh, gosh, look at that, that rib cage is just like all over the place. <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm thinking of as I'm sketching this. So Yeah, there's some older music on this playlist, Amaze, for sure. I know this is like one of her older hits. I'm a child of the 90s, what can I say? You're always nostalgic for what you listen to when you were younger. I will say I don't quite understand what's going on in the face here, so I'm just gonna I haven't studied the buffalo head very much. Probably should have done a face before I jumped into this hind hind shot. I see the ear. I can I can guesstimate that the eye is down here somewhere because that's the ear and the horn, and we're just not seeing it because of this uh, neck ruff. But I don't really know. I think this is all the facial fur, maybe. I love this bit. I love that we can see the uh, shaggy brown coat. And this is also Goo Goo Dolls, in case you wanted to know. Yes, this is a very old playlist. I don't even know if these guys still tour. So I'm trying to think of what I want to stream later today, and I realized I never finished my sea slug from the other, the sea slug dragon that we started last Wednesday. So I'm kind of like, man, should I just make every Wednesday sea slug, <laughs> sea slug stream day, sea slug dragons? They are so fun, and I do like working on them. Maybe I'll just have, I don't know. I'm probably leaning in too hard to the uh, theme stream right away thing. Oh, I think this is his, this is the bottom of his neck right there. I see, I see. But I, I kind of want to finish that, but I also need to finish some of those thumbnails for my portfolio. I made him way too squatty. <laughs> I'm like, why does he look so weird? It's because I didn't do my shapes first. That's why he looks so weird. I didn't do the thing that I'm supposed to be practicing here. There we go. That's what makes me love. This is a really funny angle though, honestly. Probably picked too hard of an angle to jump into. Seeing as I've never drawn a buffalo before. <laughs> Not even sure how often I've drawn cows. It's just not like a common subject, you know? Anyway, that looks a little better. So yeah, there we go. Messing up on stream, getting the bad drawings out. That's the theme of these guys. <laughs> at least if you guys feel like your drawings aren't coming out well, just, you know, at least people aren't watching you mess up <laughs> actively. <laughs> I gotta get over that. It's the other thing I'm trying to work on. I gotta stop caring so much about that kind of stuff. This is why streaming has been hard for me. And why I haven't done it in a while until like last year when I kind of jumped back in. <sighs> it's okay. Um, oh, thank you. Honestly, some of this line work stuff, I'm, I, I can't even take credit for it totally because I think it's, uh, I think a lot of it's this program. So Paint Tool Sci, and this isn't even, I haven't even adjusted the settings to be the way they are at, at my program at home. Pink Tool Sci, the only reason I, I keep this program around, it's so old. I don't know if anyone else uses it. 
because I, I love the way this ink brush looks like it's the most and like when you're sketching it has these nice little tail ends that just kind of flow away from you um yeah I don't know I think it's great I don't remember uh I don't remember how all my settings were in their program but I can never get the same line quality in like Photoshop you know like they just I'm sure there's a pen setting I could change or something or even in Clip Studio I haven't really found one Krita comes close I will say I will give you this amaze I know you're a big Krita fan Krita comes close to this line quality um which is great for a free program in case I ever can't keep using my Psy license. Hi, Squirrel. I'll have to turn my camera around next time he comes by the window. I haven't made friends with these squirrels at my studio, just the squirrels at my house, in case anyone's wondering. So I don't know these squirrels very well. Okay, that looks a little better. All right, now to the to the face. I love I love the movement of his hair. Like, look at this. Look at that craziness. The magpie outside too now. All right, I'm just gonna make some landmarks here. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy face. Whoa. Hey, do you guys wanna hear this magpie outside my window? He's making crazy sounds. Oh shoot, I scared him. I think I scared him. Oh no, he's still there. We'll see if you guys can hear him. He's like singing a crazy song right now, where he was. Um, it's sign up. It is a one-time purchase, but you technically only get one license with it, which I'm not sure how. I have it on my laptop and my and my computer at home, so somehow I've worked around that because I don't think I've ever bought a second Psy license. Um, it is still one-time buy. I really like Psy. If anyone's looking for a, a, a cheap, it's like twenty or fifty bucks somewhere in there. A cheap digital program that works well. I mean, you can't do as much as with Photoshop. Like it's obviously a basic sketching and drawing program, but I feel like. I don't know. I just, I love the way it handles lines specifically and it has some pretty good blending tools too that you can do some quick effects with. Reminds me a lot of like old school open canvas, which is what I used almost exclusively until I moved to Colorado in 2015. Um, I just used like the free beta version of open canvas for most of my early art career. Um, until I finally was like, okay, I guess I should learn Photoshop. All right, I'm getting too caught up on details again. This is why it's gonna look weird, Casey. We're building good sketching habits, guys. We're doing shape, gesture. Even though I love his beard and I want to draw it so much. <laughs> and he's, his head's also way too big compared to the other one, but that's okay. I'll fix it later. We got this nice, uh, nice shoulder shape here. Look at these guys. Look at these big old boys. Craziness. Yeah, if anybody's looking for a good um, digital sketch program, Paint Tool Size is a really good one. Because, yeah, I'm not, like I said, I'm not able to get these lines in other programs, so I don't think it's necessarily me. Maybe a little bit, but not, I don't know. It's a good program, that's all I'm saying. Right, we got his, like, big... What is this, a waddle? What would you call that? A little do, it's a dewlap. It's a dewlap. I learned that. I learned that because it's called that for moose. This the little bell thing. Like, you know how moose have like, maybe you don't know this, I don't know. Moose have a thing right here. <laughs> it looks like that somewhat. Here's our moose. I'm just gonna pretend we're, it's a moose. Um, so a dewlap, this thing right here. Apparently its whole purpose is to be smelly, <laughs> which is gross. I don't know if that's the same purpose as the, the ones here on the buffalo. You can see it right there, sort of. But it's to attract a mate. <laughs> that's why. Don't forget the action line. Oh no, yeah, the action line's great. I, uh, yeah, I don't usually draw the line, but I am, I do try to be aware of it. I probably should be in a better habit of drawing it, though. It's funny because when I do like figure drawing, I definitely draw like motion lines, like action lines to kind of build my image around. But I don't really tend to do that as much with animals. I don't know why. Probably should. It'll probably help me. Like I said, uh, this, is a, this is a do what I say, not as I do stream <laughs> today. I'm not doing good practices here.
Oh, I made his face so big. I need to make it smaller, probably. Or I don't know, maybe, hold on, maybe his face is big too and I just can't tell. I'm just assuming his eye is here somewhere and you just can't see it. I love that you can see underneath all that fur, you can still see so much muscle definition. Like, what a beefy animal. I do really like the colors here. I may, I may throw color on this later. Mystery feet. We don't know what they look like. <laughs> oh, herbivores. I love their tiny little hooves, though. It's great when a giant animal just has little tiny feet. It's hard in the sketch stage. I'm just gonna shade it in quickly here. All right, here's our uh, fighting buffalo, i.e. bison. Fun fact, buffalo is not a word. I mean, I guess it is a word, but it's not the actual name of the animal. Um, all right, let's do another. Sweet, some fun. <sighs> just I gotta decide which one to color after this. Oh, that's right, we were gonna do a sable antelope because we looked at those. Maybe I'll throw a granuck in for fun. Drew you already. You can go away. No. I don't know if I want to draw that sable antelope, but that kudu is so pretty. Oh my gosh. I want to draw the horns. I'm just going to draw the face. Who am I kidding? I'm probably kidding. All right, let's do it. We'll do the sable antelope later. There's too many ungulates, guys. Never let me do a broad category like this again. There's <laughs> too many options. I can't pick and I want to do them all. It's a big problem. Having a big problem, guys. Oops, sit up straight. Oh, it's getting warm in here. Okay. Sables always make you think of, yes, Endless Night. Oh my gosh, you're right. I haven't thought about that name in a long time. I do remember her. Yeah. I think that was probably the first place I heard of a sable antelope. It's, uh, let's see. What have I, I think I got most of chat. Post of the caribou, perfect. I'm gonna go check that out in just a sec. Do you want me to put it on stream or would that be embarrassing? I won't do that if you don't want me to. I think you've been doing a great job with these. Um, for anybody who wants to post along. Oh, these look awesome. Oh my gosh, I love your caribou. The moose, I think you did a great job with the moose antlers. They're really complex. Good doolap. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for anybody who's uh, new, we are doing like a, you can post as you do the, join in the sketch along if you'd like to. You sure, certainly don't have to. Um, but it's fun for me to see what you guys are coming up with in this. Honestly, same, yeah, I'm sure it's all good. I'm not sure what that means, so I'm gonna not, I'm gonna not show them unless you want me to. All right, but they are really nice. I liked your, um, your cervids are honestly, I feel like all of yours, you're down, you're much better at drawing animals than you think you are, I think. Like I can tell, especially with your birds of prey, I can tell you've been working on those. Um, but yeah, like your lions look great. It's all, yeah, I think you're doing great. I also love seeing everybody's griffins. Oh my gosh, I just was looking at the griffins that I made last Wednesday, so cute. I mean, if you guys wanna combine some animals today for fun, go for it. I'm certainly not gonna stop anybody. That was pretty fun. We'll have to do another one where it's kind of like that, like make a mythical creature using what we've learned. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the month. What do you guys think about that idea? I don't know. 
I do want the warm up streams to stay fairly warm up y like I do I do like the idea of starting off working from some reference, but I think you can still use reference and get creative right kind of like we did for the Griffin. I love this nose shape here. Look at that face. Look at that smug little smile. He's so cute. He's so he's so pleased with himself. All I'm looking for is you. Came upon me right on me. You're the reason I'm still here. Love her. So they talk about a lot of times when you hear people talk about like portrait art, especially, you'll hear them talking about um, what's called the planes of the face, right? Like if you think of the face as like being made up of different planes of form and between like form and value and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know if this is going to look right. Hold on. Speaking of planes. Um, but yeah, you can like, and it's easier in clearer photos. Oh, why is this like that? Oh, shoot, you guys, I was doing so good with this. Look what I did. Drew my sketch. Um, like, um, but the planes are basically like the flat areas. So like this would be like a plane, like right here. We're gonna do a, I need to work on my portraits and my headshots. I think that magpie left. Um, but yeah, like if you if you break up a face that's really complex into like, think of it like flat planes, it can help you kind of figure out how, how to put it together like a puzzle, you know? So I don't wanna take that piece, hold on. Gotta be very careful. There we go. Let's get you over here with the sketches. What are you doing on the wrong layer? How dare you? Clearly it's your fault and not mine. Right, we're gonna fix that. Moving on my reference pictures down and down. Okay. And what did you there we go? Great. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that motorcycle thing for a minute. I do like the I do like the hard exhaust. That might be my favorite part. Anyway, I need to I need to think about the planes of the face here because I'm struggling with this one. So like here's one that I see right under the eye. And then um, you can see up here it sort of angles up like that. And then this one, just choosing different colors to help you guys see, help me see as well. So I'm seeing a lot of different planes here. Uh, just <laughs> start to look like a clown. Don't know why I chose that color. Sorry, Mr. Kudu. Um, so they have a very narrow, like, cheeks, like, their cheeks are kind of narrow, you know? Anyway, it can help you kind of see, if you think about form a little bit, it can help you see, like, what you're actually drawing, you know? Kind of looks like a crazy mask. Looking kind of angry there, Mr. Kudo. Looking extremely angry there, Mr. Kudo. <laughs> anyway, hopefully, hopefully this is making sense. Um, yeah, I'm gonna erase that. So I need to, I need to redraw some stuff because even just doing that kind of helped me see the bits that I'm messing up on. Oh, thank you. I can show them if I want. Okay, yeah, let's look at it. Let's look at Amaze's stuff really fast. I'll just pull the Discord thing over here. Um, look at what he did. Look at these moose. I won't scroll up because I know other people have shared work and I don't want to share without permission, but I love, I think you did a great job with both of these, honestly. Like really good job on the, on the different sections of the moose too, because that's a really, yeah, really complex, like different looking cervid than what we've, what we drew yesterday. And really great movement on this one for sure. Definitely hearts. Yeah, these are awesome. Thank you for sharing them. I love seeing what people are doing. There's never any pressure, but you can share them in Discord, on Instagram, 
in a comment somewhere, <laughs> whatever, whatever is easiest. If you know me in real life, you can text me. Uh, I don't know if I don't, she may not want me to say this. So my mom has been watching these and kind of, she sketched along with the first one. I don't know if she's watching right now. She probably is. Um, or she'll watch later because, you know, moms. <laughs> uh, but she was drawing and I was so happy. I don't think I've seen my mom draw in a long time. So yeah, however, however you are participating. If you want to show me, feel free. You certainly don't have to, but it, it makes, I think this kind of scratches a little bit of that, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna say teacher itch because I'm not sure that I'm actually teaching anything, but I think it is fun to talk about technique and like, I don't know. Hopefully you guys know what I'm saying because I'm not saying it very well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and sorry for a teacher, it might be a weird thing for those who don't. I used to be a teacher. Um, I was an elementary school art teacher for about five years out of college. And then I decided that was enough and uh, moved to Colorado to do illustration. So I'm currently on like kind of a book illustration journey. Not kind of, I am. I'm trying, trying to really push it. I mean, I've, I've always been trying to really push it, but this year especially, I think I really, going to be like an all-in effort, I think, to try and get some kind of traction in the industry. So uh, yeah. Okay, that's better. Yeah, planes of the face is helpful for sure. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, I still kind of miss just, you know, talking about fundamentals and basics and just having people to practice those things with or talk about technique with. I feel like that was kind of, even though it was just elementary school art, you know, so it wasn't really like the most in-depth conversation I've ever had about art, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, but you know, the kids had enthusiasm and they were really excited to learn. And I do miss, I do miss that part of teaching. That's the rewarding part, right? It's the, uh, it's all the administrative stuff and the parents that really ruined that job, unfortunately. I probably could have done it longer if it hadn't been for just uh, the way the education system works, which I am not, we don't have time for that soapbox. So I'm not gonna get into that right now, but um, probably ever, because I just don't, with my luck, it would come back to bite me someday. Um, <laughs> I just don't like his, these, I like the markings, but drawing them is just making him look very funny. So we're just gonna skip that and uh, add them in color if I color this. But it is nice, yeah. Like I said, so thanks for thanks for hanging out and talking art with me, guys, and doing some sketching. And like I say, we're all learning. It's a very common thing you hear in the teaching world is a lifelong learner. <laughs> Everyone's a lifelong learner. And that's certainly true with art. You're never done. Really, you're never done with most disciplines, I guess. But gosh, look at his beautifulness. Ugh. What a pretty animal. I don't think I'm doing him justice at all. Anyway, catch up on what I learned. Um, <clears throat> what I learned this week. Hold on. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that that helped. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so it's water time. Ugh, my voice is so weak these days. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, see, Charlie's, Charlie's like, yeah, those are great. They are really good. <clears throat> I'm definitely teaching you things. Oh, well, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I was kind of feeling a little like, I don't know. I want to say meh about Twitch because I, I love, I love just being able to work with other people. It's kind of like a stand-in for a studio setting, you know, like when... A lot of artists get to do they like have a studio together and they can kind of bounce ideas like I, I've never had that and so I feel like twitch really is good for that but I think kind of like even like discovering that there is like an educational side of twitch too and I was talking um, on babe stream last night about this a little actually but I don't know it just kind of made me more excited to 
don't know, it just made me think about like the possibilities of like what I could do on Twitch, I think a little differently. So um, yeah, I'm glad that this is helping anyone and I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad anybody is feeling inspired to draw anything new um, ever from one of my streams, but especially through this little sketch series. So it's definitely uh, been good for me. So I'm literally every year, <laughs> every year that since I moved to Colorado, one of the top goals on my like, you know, goals for this year list has always been like start the day with 30 minutes of sketches, like warm up sketches from from observation of some kind. It can be like an art book or like pictures of things or whatever, or go out and with my sketchbook and sit outside. Like I try I, every year, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it this year. And like every year, I'll do it a few times. And then I'll just kind of get busy or I'll be I'll like jump into other projects and I just won't do it <laughs> consistently. So this has been really helpful. Like this is the most consistent I've ever been with warm up sketches, I think. And it's only been like two weeks. <laughs> so sad. Uh, so thanks for helping me uh, achieve a very long term goal. I just realized the downside of drawing him so big. I don't know if I'm have room for his beautiful horns. I'm still learning to hate caribou antlers less than I do. <laughs> That's fair. They are complex, um, but use that guide. And I think they, yeah, they even modeled it. I think on caribou antlers. That's what they were talking about. I mean, I think what you've got. I mean, just what you just what you showed us. I think looks really wow. That ear is not big enough. <laughs> All right, what are we doing on time? All right, it's 1140. Perfect. So probably most of you have hit your 30 minute mark by now. If you need to bow out, that is okay. I always forget to like stop my timer when I'm looking at reference pictures. So I have a, I, I'm pretty sure I've sketched for 30 minutes at this point. All that I'm left in, look for left in. I love this little free bit. All right, let's do some fun horns. This is the part I was really excited about. So I love that you can see like the twist, like these are the parts that here. If anyone's uh, intimidated by horns, just just know that they tend to have like a flattish side and a rounded side a lot of times, or or sometimes they can be like flattish on both sides, but they're very geometric. So like this side right here is like twisting around, and it actually comes out here probably most of you can figure this out on your own, but just in case you've never, you know, if you're new to sketching and you've never really looked closely at how a horn, especially a curved one is shaped, um, they tend to, they tend to follow this, this general rule, especially when they're curved. Like you, you'll see this for sure on, um, bighorn sheep horns. But if it helps you to kind of visualize, um, so I'm going to do blue for the other side. So that's really distinct. Here's that outside bit, and the uh, the lines on the horns tend to kind of connect at the at the point of convergence, I guess. And they follow that line that twists around. So we got this, and then there's like actually a little tiny bit of red on the end here, but you probably won't be able to see that very well. Yeah. So we've got our lines this way. This way. I know this blue is probably not the best choice, but you can see that the lines sort of a uh, sort of line up here. Did not do a good job of tracing that section. Anyway, hopefully you guys get the point. But um, yeah, so when you're when you're doing your sketch, uh, you can break it down like that. So they're not quite like antlers, right? Because they don't have the different beams coming off. Although that would be really fun if there was like a twisty antler like that. That might be a fun creature design thing I could incorporate maybe into a sea slug dragon. And that's part of why I'm doing this, right? It's because you get ideas. But anyway, I digress. Not that I ever digress. We definitely don't uh, have our tangents around here either. All right, I gotta erase all this because I can't see it. All 
So the part I want to make sure I get right is this. It's actually kind of interesting. Pay attention to your negative space too. So you can see this, let's use a lighter color again. Um, the space between the ears and the horn um, can also be a good guide. So you can see they're pretty similar. Um, and it can kind of help you form the arch, at least for this creature. I'm just kind of drawing that line in the same way over both ears. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually try that really fast. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna draw the negative space instead of the horn to show what I mean. So it's actually showing me that I I don't know if I pointed my ear enough. We'll we'll go ahead and do it that way. Follow the ear. I'm gonna hold off on the back side here and do the uh, do the twist that we were talking about. And you can see the nice like a really fun little curve there. You can almost, it's hard to tell, but it's like this point. Uh, it's almost like this point is like this. It's like coming at a curve. So like, depending on the angle, like you can almost see a slight indention right there where you can see the actual curves. So I'm gonna try and draw that actually. It's really interesting. Good to note. Oh, there's a puppy howling outside. The, um, the people I rent my studio from, they own, it's a big homesteading property out here in the mountains. And um, they board dogs sometimes for folks, you know, who are traveling or whatever. So they have like a little dog kennel. And sometimes the little pups get lonely. <laughs> They're so sad. Like there's other dogs around, but you know, they miss their people. And so they just sit there and howl sometimes. I'm like, oh, you miss your person. And then I try to go over there and comfort them and they freak out half the time because they're just like badly socialized <laughs> or they're just so like anxious that they can't control themselves. I don't know. It's one or the other. I know it's so sad. There's like a a narrowing happening here that I'm struggling to capture. It's almost like this ridge. It's actually taking longer than I thought it was going to. There we go, it's a little closer. Hmm. Ah, Casey threw her pen. Happens all the time. Oh, did you guys see that rooster? I also like this curve, like you can almost see it kind of curving around to the side here. So an interesting thing I just noticed is that little point I was talking about, it lines up really, really nicely, actually on both of them with uh, where the horn comes out on top. So that's a good guideline to, to note. I think I did the horn too long. I think that's part of what I'm having trouble. Hmm. Stream struggles. Da, na, 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 na. All right. Pray to God, got a building fire. Tears fall down my brain. This is one of those times where I'm like, I wish I was sculpting right now. Because I feel like I could really knock this out with sculpting easily, but turning something three-dimensional into 2D is hard. And granted, this already kind of 2D for me right here, so this is a little bit cheating. That's why live, like live sketching is kind of hard to replace. But I don't have the opportunity to draw one of these creatures in person, so 
This is the next best thing, right? Here we go. You walked in, I didn't know what I should do. But down and had a beard. Mm -hmm. You thought you heard a cat yelling in the cold when you're outside? There's your own cat yelling in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, cats are funny creatures. Does he, does he do that a lot? I feel like there's some cats that people let outside here which I don't know why, because they, ne they never last long. This is Colorado. It's like the largest fauna in the States live here and the biggest predators, but anyway. Um, <laughs> the other day there was some that were, I think they were in heat or something. And so there was like a huge yowling fest going on outside my window. <laughs> uh, it was kind of funny. This is all the pain. So I could cheat right now and just like copy this horn and flip it, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm trying to get better at things. Better cry. Like rain. Sun comes out tomorrow. Gotta love a Hootie and the Bluefish cover. All right, I'm gonna try, try the uh, draw the negative space thing again. I don't know if it's gonna work. I know this horn is wrong. I'm going to fix it. I just, uh, I'm just kind of sketching it in right now. Ah, don't look. Don't look. Actually, I'm not too far off there. I mean, it's probably not perfect, but it's close. Close to the same the same height. Makes me feel slightly better. I don't know if you guys can hear that rooster, but he is losing his mind out there. The other day, so they have some, they also have chickens, right, obviously. And um, they had some babies uh, last year, and like late last year. And so the, the males, like the chicks that were males, have started maturing and they've started crowing. So they've had to separate, you know, the, the older male from the younger ones, I'm assuming, because he probably killed them or beat them up or something. Um, and so they're like in different pen areas. <laughs> one, one morning I came over here and they were having like a crow off. <laughs> and you could tell they'd been doing it all day because I think it was later in the day that I was over here. I don't know, it was probably close around noon or something. And um, it sounded like horse. <laughs> you know, like when you've been like screaming for a while and you just lose your voice. I've never heard, I've never heard a crow a crow sound like that, or a crowing, I guess I should say, not a bird, but crow, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and like one would do it and it'd be like, grr, 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 you know, like really, really sad sounding. 
Uh, and then the other one a few seconds later would respond and they just kind of like, there'd be like a 20 second pause in between each one. It was just like, this one would go and then wait. And then this one would go and then wait. And it was so sad. <laughs> so anyway, it sounds like just one is doing it today. So maybe one of them gave up. I'm assuming the younger one, but I don't know. Uh, it was, I'd never, I'd never, uh, it was almost like a chicken rat battle. Like if, if there were such a, if such a metaphor could exist. That's how I like to think of it. They're just like trash talking each other. All right, Mr. Kudo, you appear to be mostly finished. I love, I love your, I love your face. I'm sure if I rotated this canvas, I would see issues. Do I dare? Let's see. Here's another trick if you don't know. Oh, why didn't that work? Is it not taking my clip horizontal? not doing it. <laughs> Hold on. Is it doing it somewhere? What's going on? So I, I was going to show you like if you don't if you if you are working digitally and you don't have the habit of rotating. Oh no, is it frozen? Oh, it is frozen. Shoot. Okay, let's make sure that's saved. Okay, let's try it again. It's not working. Hmm. Well, if you work digitally, um, it's a good it's a good habit. Let me just close these things. Good habit to rotate your canvas. Um, and I think I mentioned this on the first sketch stream we did, but um, if you're working with a sketchbook, you can hold it up to a mirror to do the same. I am gonna draw a sable antelope. I don't wanna forget that, that's gonna be the last one. Let me just uh, save again and close this and try again with Sai here. It might just be, I just couldn't handle it. All the ungulates happening on that page. So horizontally, why isn't this working? I've never not had this work before. All right, the hotkey works. <laughs> Why can't I click the button? That's weird. Um, yeah, wow, so I'm seeing definitely some issues with this one. I think we did this on the Birds of Prey. Um, the Birds of Prey one. Oh yeah, his, his nose is off center. Well, actually, no, maybe it's not. Maybe that's just the angle he's standing at here in the picture. Anyway, highly recommend doing that if you, why is it not letting me do it this way? That's so strange. You guys can see me clicking that, right? <laughs> Flip horizontally. Weird. All right, well, at least the hockey works, I guess. Um, don't die on me, Sai. I need you. I can't sketch without you. <laughs> okay. Who do I want to color? I want to color these buffalo still. Let's do a sable antelope and then I'll decide going a little too long, but you know, this whole week I've gone a little bit longer and it's been really nice because uh, this is the only, the first week I've had in like months, months and months. Well, I guess I did have one doctor's appointment Monday morning, but other than that, I've had no appointments all week. <laughs> it's so nice. I don't have any, that's like, you guys don't understand for the, yeah, that has not been the case for me in like a year. So very, very excited about that. Look at this beautiful animal. Oh, how, how dare, seriously, how dare. Sable antelopes have no right to be this pretty. Let's draw this boy. You can see a lot of the features really nicely in this photo. It is hard with um, animals that are solid colors, especially black, because it tends to absorb light in funny ways. And so it's hard to make out the details sometimes. Um, yeah, that neck is still weird, but we're not going to worry about it right now. All right, sable antelope, who is not an antelope. Spoiler alert, guys. If you're like me and you did not know that. I don't like how... I don't like my page economy here. I feel like there's a better way.
Oh well, it doesn't matter. What? Let's slide it up here. On the wrong layer again. A little bit better, anyway. We'll just draw him below. All right, I uh, will pick one to color. I don't know which one yet. I do like the idea of ending on a colored one. Actually, I don't think that page got me. Never danced like this before. Oh, come on. Don't be like this. Ugh, really? You're just slightly too fat? like making things fit guys makes me feel good <laughs> okay uh here we go look at the shape of this face it looks like a shoe so remember, we're, we're focusing on shape, right? It's just so scoopy. Like, look at how scoopy that is. You can also break it down like this. If you're having trouble, they have a very square jaw and like this funny triangular box shape that comes out. You'll see a lot of art books break down shape like that. I tend to, I like round shapes. <laughs> they just make more sense to me. Like here's that big barrel, here's those big old glute muscles and thigh muscles back here. Um, but yeah, however you want to break it down, just uh, don't pull on me and get too excited ahead of time. Maybe if I pull back, it'll help me focus on shape better. definitely way exaggerating this. Hold on. I just really get excited about these, these shapes. I should draw more cows. I clearly like cow muscle. Actually, there was a, I found it somehow. I don't know how I found this account. There's a, a, an account on Instagram that does like a cow comic, like on Webtoons. I don't know how I found it, but the cows are so good. <laughs> And it makes me want to draw cows every time I look at it. And I've just never had a desire to draw a cow. Maybe that's just me being too American. Like buffalo, for sure. Wait, I think I just don't, I just, I don't know. I just think of cows as like a, I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know. I've actually never parsed that out before. I guess I just haven't really thought about having an interest. But anyway, this comic, this comic makes me, Makes me want to draw cows. And now that I'm drawing these technically bovines, apparently, as I've learned and been baffled about multiple times on stream, apparently I really like cow shapes. I'm learning about myself. So I'm going to draw that hind leg in the back to help me find the knee, ankle. Make sure we get our angle right here angles make all the difference I feel like. That's close enough. Uh, another thing to, to notice if you're having trouble with these shapes is the the bend of the ankle. A lot of times the like it kind of almost makes this like soft triangle shape right here. It's 
kind of how I remember the leg. Like it's easy to want to accidentally be like, just like copy that shape, but that's not quite right. Um, it kind of smooths into, there's like a tendon here connecting those bones. And it kind of, the skin kind of stretches over that tendon or that muscle probably um, to kind of make it a smoother transition down to the, the hoof. Anyway, because I, I mean, I have that problem too, because I think horse, well, no, it's, it's in horses too. But yeah, the, I guess the bottom point of this triangle is always lower than the ankle triangle is another way to think of it if you're spatial. Oh, I can see the feet. Hold on. Also getting way too into that too fast again. Oops. Unplug the wrong part of my speaker. And then they also have, it's kind of funny. I need to study the musculature of these creatures more. Maybe I should have done a muscle study when we did the equines and the cervids bone structures too. I might, might make that adjustment in the future if I can find them. I'll have to look at those ahead of time for sure. Gotta come prepared for class. Um, but I'm really interested in these leg muscles. In fact, I might pull up a cervid one. I know those are easy to find. I don't know if there'd be an easy one for a sable antelope. Because <laughs> it's so hard to see here, but they... Yeah, I'm going to do it really fast. I need, I need, I need it for me. Chess does not know what a cervid is, apparently. Okay, let's do deer. Deer muscle. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Man, it's so pretty. Okay. I'm gonna find a really good. This one's really nice. Oh, there's some really good ones here. So this one looks like it was um, done in ZBrush, but. There's the cervid. Oh, here's a nice horse, actually. Perfect. I love that. Actually, this horse is so muscular. Muscular, you can kind of see it. Um, but anyway, I just want to look at the way that the like the way that those um, arm and leg muscles kind of come out. Um, usually you don't see quite that much in the horse. Let's find another horse. Because I get confused. I tend to draw a lot of things the way horses look. This horse is actually extremely muscular. I don't know if that's actually a good picture. Huh? Well, maybe it is. Okay. So we can see those muscles the way they kind of bunch right here. And then when we look at, you can see right here, see, I don't know if that's a super accurate because look how round that one is. This is what I think of when I think of horse. This like straight line here, maybe it's because its leg is lifted. Um, but yeah, like when I, I remember as a kid, like I would just like, I would always draw horse muscles like this, right? But then like in deer, you find it and you can see it here this actually looks more horse-like because in a lot of deer they tend to be 
like you see more of the elbow is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I keep trailing off because I'm looking for stuff. Let me see if I can find a good picture. Wow, look at that. Sorry, Pinterest is dangerous. Um, here. Deer from the side. It's really prominent in, oh my gosh, look at this moose. It's really prominent in baby deer. So maybe we'll just pull up a baby deer. Here we go. This is a great, a great example of what I'm talking Oh, this one is too. Great example of what I mean. So you see how you can see like the whole elbow. And I, I kind of associate that with cervids at this point. Like anytime I think of it drawing a deer, there's really only like a couple of differences that I think of. It's this really strong like angularness and like slender angularness. And then this like like almost always, you, you don't really, there's not like a heavy muscle right here. Um, most of the time, it's just, you see this little elbow sticking up and you don't see that. Like it's all under this muscle here in the horse. Um, but yeah, this isn't because the pose is not doing a good job here. Um, but yeah, you usually see, because these muscles just aren't that big, this might even be a little bit buff, <laughs> but I feel like that's one of the main differences that I always notice. And then, like I said, this really strong, like, long like long femur strong like angularness and then you can see it's like more it's more sloped in a horse it's not like sticking up way out here again i think i need to watch bambi and, and do a study because yeah that's way more like what the sable antelope is i wonder if that's just like a horse and cow leg shape i'm gonna take these off here yeah here's my deer Where's my actual deer? Where are you? Yeah, like look at those legs. You would just never see that on a horse. Anyway, just something to think about. Um, certainly, certainly part of the reason I'm doing this is so that I can take better notes in my brain to like reinforce those differences. I'm gonna go back and look at my deer now. See if I mess that up. So there's our horses. because those are all kind of angular elbowy <laughs> poses um okay yeah so we got that strong elbow no i didn't just go here for deer pictures so this one's harder to see i think i may have even talked about this a little bit yesterday yeah interesting interesting hmm <laughs> something to think about something to think about okay let's finish our antelope i'm sorry i promise i'm gonna finish the drawing without getting sidetracked at least once. Actually, maybe I shouldn't make that promise. I probably can't keep it. I'm way too easily distracted. Getting cold on the silence. I feel like we listened to this already today. So Such an upbeat song for the topic. Oh, whoops, wrong verse. Now I'm looking for you. Look how high. Look how high that eyeball is on this face. It's very sheepy. It's like there's the eye, the orbital bone or whatever. And it's like right inside there. It's crazy. It's so high. You can see the shadow of like that really heavy brow kind of that brow bone where that eye is kind of coming out. And then remember, remember our skull shapes, right? We've usually underneath here got, for most of the worst, I've got these really long bones here. It's gonna be a little bit sallow cheeked right there because there's just like a big, it's basically where all the chompers are, right? I do like the way that looks. I kinda wanna keep it that way, but we're not going to. Um, so yeah, just keep those things in mind. Bones are important. It's 
hard to see with the striping on this guy too, but maybe I'll come back and color that in. Mm. It's kind of like a funny horse face in a way, almost. A really squashed, strange horse face. <laughs> like, a, like a caricature of a horse, yeah. All right, and then our, our antlers, or excuse me, our horns, how dare I? Horns come like right up above the eye there. And this is why I thought they were more antelope because I feel like antelopes typically have the, the horns coming right out of that, that brow bone and typically bovine have them coming out of like this way. So maybe that's, I mean, obviously somebody else thought they were antelope too because they are called sable antelope, despite bafflingly not being antelope. <laughs> so fascinating. I like that ear shape. That's, that's like a giant horse ear. All right, I'm gonna have to move you down, boy. You are too tall. We're just gonna go crazy, aren't we? I know his antlers are his horns, but I keep doing that. Don't look like that, but. They can. Let's be more accurate now. Getting cold on the island. One day your horns will be like that. Don't you worry. Mr. Sable Antelope. Or Mrs. You don't know. I actually think I think they all have horns. No, it's a boy. Never mind. <laughs> I figured it out, don't worry. It's almost like there's an indicator. Fun little mane. Mane shapes. I really like this. I want to exaggerate it a little bit. It's very like I don't know, stylized main situation happening. Just a mouth is a man on the shelf. Whoops, hold on. Your antlers are too long. I can't see your picture. We're just gonna have to do this. <laughs> antlers. Ugh, why do I keep saying that? They are definitely horns and I do know the difference. <laughs> Promise. Uh, see, Lento was a family name for its simulated horses. Oh, really? I should probably read chat so I can learn things. Yes, Charlie's Dragon would know this. Hello, Mr. Rooster. Kudos for the kudo. <laughs> well, I missed a lot of chat. I'm sorry. Uh, figuring out which plane was visible was just shape twisted. It reminded me of this drawing. I can't see it because malware bytes blocked it for some reason. Sorry. I don't know why. It's just tiny. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no more bites isn't letting me look at that link. Sorry, Amaze. Um, let's see. Well, I'm really behind on chat. I didn't realize I was missing so much. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see. It's gotten more talkative. That's funny. Fun part is having gotten one side good, then you have to draw the mirror image. <laughs> the fun part, yeah. Have a hard time getting curves good in the first place. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a trick for sure. I'm actually surprised that I that this one went that quickly. I feel like when we were doing antlers yesterday, I had to redraw a lot more. So um, it's just practice, maybe. Maybe it's just the practice of doing it yesterday helped me. Um, let's see. Twisting pains. Is it just another? Is it another critter? I can look up the critter. 
Um, Cam, yeah, if I could figure it out. Yeah, no apartments, yeah. Thank you for, oh, no, thank you for being a, I don't know if student's the right word. I feel weird about that. Thanks for joining me in this exercise. <laughs> I am also a student. We're all learning. We're all learning. Hippotragus. That's cool. It's named for its similarity to horses, but not for the relationship. Uh, that's interesting. And that's part of why I feel like a lot of scientific naming is, is misleading, because when I see hippo, I do think horse. Fun fact for anybody who's like, why do you think horse and not hippo? Um, think about like your hippogriff and your hippocampus. You know, that's where all those names come from. But yeah, see how they're under Bovidae? That, that's what blew my mind yesterday. And the Audat's in there too. The or Oh, the Oryx is. Okay, cool. I was going to look this up later anyway. So perfect. Yeah, that blows my mind. Blows my mind. I love the breakdown here on Wikipedia. I know Wikipedia is not like ideal for everything, but it seems to be pretty good for this kind of thing. See, they're like here with the heart beast and the topi, and they're right next to Caprine, which is like, or like, like oh wait, are they in Caprine? Wait, this is misleading. Hold on. Is that why they have sheep faces? Oh my gosh. I'm learning. I'm learning. There's Tibetan antelope. The muskox? No. Really? The muskox is close, more closely related to sheep and goats than it is to cows? What? I guess it does have kind of a sheepy face. Wow. I guess it is smaller. It does kind of look like a like a tacken, or however you say that, now that I think about it. This is a tacken, by the way. Very fun animals. Wow, that just blew my mind again. You guys are just watching my mind get blown left and right. Okay, I'm confused though, because this isn't showing sable antelope. I'm probably looking at this wrong. Tibetan antelope, muskox, grouse sheep, how good. Huh. That's uh is not I'm mean, I'm not reading this wrong, right? Like it's whoa, 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 calm down. Uh, like look, it says it says it says these come out of Caprine, which is Caprini. It's the the sheep and goat family. It's where Capricorn comes from. Yeah, this is the name I couldn't pronounce earlier that started with an A. <laughs> uh, wow. Wait, I'm so confused though. Why aren't they showing? Anyway, I'll figure this out off stream. Sorry, guys. You guys can look at Wikipedia on your own. Am I just misreading this? Somebody who knows more about phylogeny, explain. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Charlie Strachan. <laughs> uh, I'm so confused. Subfamily, but yeah, horse, horse like bovines. Interesting, interesting. Clearly need to do more studies on animals. No, 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 no. That's what we're here for. We're, we're going to do studies. Um, Works, Gim's book. Yeah, that's really cool. Grazing antelope. Read chat more, sorry. I know, I was drawing. I get, behind, I get focused. I clicked it. Oh, I think it just took me to where I was. Um, I do not know all these things. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> Bummer, I was, I was counting on you, Charlie's Dragon. You're the, the animal guru here. Or anything Latin derived, yeah, muskox are giant sheep. I know, crazy. Let's try this again, tiny URL. Oh yeah, I remember this image. I'm not sure why it didn't let me click the other tiny URL. Maybe there was something on that page that it didn't like. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, for sure. That's the undulation, it's the exact same concept. Orfish, oh, this is the one you looked at the orfish for. I think we talked about that, yeah. Orfish are a great study for that. Tekkens are so weird. Yeah, I, I didn't know about them until about a year ago either. They're sister groups to Caprine. So they have a common ancestor, but they didn't come from them. Okay, so this, this chart is just slightly misleading then. It's just overly simplified. Oh, I see, no, you're right. Okay, I do see, I misread it, yes. Okay. Yeah, I followed the wrong line. I see. I see. I see. Okay. 
interesting. Yeah, this is just too big of a, too big of a scope of animals. Kudos, so cool. I can't, it still, it still blows my mind that these are all technically under bovid. I had no idea that antelope were largely categorized under, categorized under bovid. I guess technically that would mean Caprina is though too, huh? Interesting. I swear I could get lost looking at uh, the family trees of things. So does that mean then that they're all technically, they're all technically cows? <laughs> or I guess bo bovid, whatever the, whatever the common ancestor of bovid A is, they're all that. <laughs> Kind of like how zebras and horses are both equines because of their ancestors being equines. Fascinating stuff. Okay. However, we're not here for a biology lesson. Sorry. I'm not, I'm not sure how I managed it, but somehow I managed to like draw this entire thing at a slight angle. It's a little weird. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Anyway, okay, I guess my brain works in angles. Things you learn about yourself while sketching. Am I on the right layer? Yes, okay. Oh, wrist stretching time. Uh, yeah, there's a split between Caprina and the last fork. Yeah, no, I see that now. I, I just misread that chart. I thought it meant, I thought because it was showing, well, you can probably see what I thought. Yeah, I thought because it was showing Caprina, like, pointing at those two things underneath it, like, further stacked, I thought it meant that they were saying those things came out of, of the sheep and goat family. Yeah. But I understand now. I just was reading it incorrectly. Antelope is not a taxonomical biological term. Oh, interesting. It's just been applied to animals that look vaguely similar and a lot of them are in. Yeah, surprisingly, that's where they are. Yeah. I guess I thought, yeah, I, I guess I probably thought they were their own, like, taxonomical, I guess, category. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the right way to say that. Yeah, until I was looking at reference pictures yesterday, I had literally no idea. I was my mind was blown for like an hour. <laughs> Just like clicking around, like, wait, what about this? Wait, what about this? Everything I know or I thought I know is a lie. Not everything, but you know, a lot. We're going to go with that more. Oh, I forgot all of this started because I was just trying to figure out the shoulder. That's why. It's got this very horsey, horsey musculature here. It's also a very muscly animal. Are these ruminants? Do they, do they chew cud? Is that part of what makes them? Are all antelope cud chewers? No, because, well, antelope again, not, not the accurate term, but all of these must be, right? Isn't that like a feature? They must, yeah, because I'm noticing like the ruminant stomach here, like that, 
what that means, like when you, if you guys ever looked at a goat, like from a head, from the straight on, it's like, here's a little goat face, right? <laughs> Terrible, terrifying goat face. Um, and then they have their little hips back here. And then there's just like this massive, like they always look bloated. Um, but that's like a feature. It's not, not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> it's like a intentional, intentional design there to make sure that they uh, can digest their food correctly. Because they eat so much nonsense, goats. But yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that in a, there's a, quite a bit of bulge here. It's like gas, basically. I don't know. That must be the difference between the, how do you say this? Bud, budantia. <laughs> it's like the cows and the, and the kudus. Because I'm not seeing it right here as much. Um, versus the Agodontia? I, I don't know. Agodontia? <laughs> Which is like all of the like impalas and the um, other, basically other things we would think of as antelopes and these guys. And it's got sheep in there too. And goats. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Uh, there's one thing I've learned about biology recently. A lot of animals that look related yeah, aren't, and a lot that don't look related are. That's so true. It's so true. Yeah, they call that convergent evolution. Oh, hey, look, Charlie's dragon is talking about that. <laughs> it's kind of like how, um, there's really good examples of it out there. The one that I think of was one, I actually learned this when I went to a, a dinosaur museum here in Colorado when I was younger, because there's this one, maybe you know what it is, Charlie's dragon. There's this one pterodon, I don't know if it's a pterodon or just some kind of like flying reptile. Um, but it has baleen teeth, or they think it, they, like, that's the structure that looks like a baleen teeth. It's like a skimmer. And so it, like, skims the water and then it siphons out, you know, the water to get the small organisms that it's eating. It's like a flying whale, basically. And so as a kid, I was like, oh, does that mean they're related to whales? Like, that was just my, you know, my thought. I was like, oh, I wonder if that means that they are in the same, like, family or whatever. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Um, and he was just, and just <laughs> to be fair, this, this paleontologist or whoever this, I don't know if they were paleontologist or not, very, was probably a little harsh with me because he was like, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. And I was like, oh, sorry. It's like, he's like, no, just think about it logically. <laughs> like, I'll never, maybe I wasn't that young. Maybe I was older. Maybe that's why he was a little bit harsher. Maybe it was the second time I went. Maybe he thought I should have known better. I don't know. I was just like because we were talking dinosaurs. Maybe I seemed like I knew more than I did. I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, I just really like dinosaurs. I don't know anything about them, though. Uh, anyway, it was some, but I'll never forget that, because he was like, yeah, like, it just, it just happens to be a really good body design for this specific niche of food gathering, right? Like, no other creature was filling that niche during this epoch, and so, or this time period, or whatever you want to call it, this era. Um, and so this animal filled that niche and like was the filter feeder. It was just an aerial filter feeder. We don't have those, I don't think. Uh, well, we have, we do have like skimmers. I think there are some birds that skim, but they don't have baleen teeth. Anyway, uh, I just, I will always remember that as the example that my first, at least conscious example, I'm sure I had others that I just didn't remember. Um, example of convergent evolution. It's very funny. All right, where did my, there he is. Nope, that's the same picture. Don't they have big brushy tails? Ooh, my stomach is rumbling. Oh, yes, they do have big brushy tails, okay. All the leaves. I gotta find one of these to color because I'm running long here. I'm gonna be back on stream later today and I don't wanna spend all day streaming so I won't get my other stuff done. Just, you know, having fun talking animals with you guys. I can leave today. I love that I can see his feet, sort of. Very cowish. So I'm cheating a little bit here because I don't, I can't quite tell what's going on. So I'm just using what we've learned about, you know, horses and kind of making it look a little horse hoofy and just cutting it in half. <laughs> Cause that's basically, I mean, sort of the difference, right? 
cloven hoof is just the toes never fused over time, and the solid hoof is that they did. I'm assuming because of running on hard packed ground, maybe? So I, aren't horses originally from like the steppes? Aren't they like Mongolia? Or maybe Africa? I don't know. Maybe it's Africa. I feel like everything started in Africa. <laughs> Yeah, DNA is crazy. It's really cool that we can learn these things. About like where we, not where everything comes from and like how everything is so connected. Self-control. Oh, well, messing up my messing up my hooves here. This looks terrible because I can't see it. I don't know what it looks like. Arr. Actually, it looks like he's almost just because of the shadow here. I wonder if he's actually lifting his hind foot. Maybe that's why it's so stretched out. Let's, uh, let's go with that. I like that better. Plus, I feel like I can draw that better. There we go. Mm, still not great. Whoa, that's not the right one. Okay. I still kind of want to color these buffaloes. I just like what's going on in the background there. Sorry, Mr. Antelope. You might have to remain uncolored. This will be the last thing I do on stream, and then I will be back on later today, roughly, uh, roughly four, mountain time. I just really like the action here, and I kind of want to paint it. Actually, let's try this. I haven't done this inside in a while. Let's try actually doing something painty. No. Oh, sure, why not? Okay. Go up folder for you so I don't lose you with anything else. I just really love the movement in this photo. It's a really well taken photograph. I have no idea. You know, kudos to the photographer. I'm so sorry that I don't know who you are. I always do things so saturated. Here we go. Blame it on the kid lit art that I'm always making. And you know, animation roots will do that to you. Alright, we're gonna do our little cheat that we did yesterday and not really a cheat, but technique, I guess I'll say. Preserve the opacity there, and I'm just gonna paint a little bit. I don't do much painting in size, so I'm not sure I may get frustrated and stop. <laughs> I don't really know how most of these brushes work, but pretty basic, so hopefully it won't be too challenging. Let's find some colors we like here. Slamming doors with you. This is all we ever thought. Why are we doing, doing, doing more? Reflections change. Becoming something else. I think it's time to walk away.
it's like the mist coming off of these guys. It's not mist, you know, it's dirt, but. So I don't know if anybody is trying to do any digital painting or looking for tips. Um, when I do cloudy, like cloudy looking things, I like to keep it pretty vague in the middle and just kind of loosely uh, outline or identify the edges. Kind of give it a slight hardness, but I'm using a watercolor brush right now. I might actually turn up the persistence on it just to make it a little harder edge. Yeah, there we go. Um, just so you can kind of see a little better, but maybe not quite that hard. And some of this has to do with pen pressure. So if you're if you're drawing on digitally without a pen, like a pressure sensitive tablet, you're making life hard on yourself, I guess I'll say. Um, this, this kind of thing is a lot easier to do. It's a lot easier to emulate uh, traditional media. And you can use pressure to stimulate different effects, right? So that's kind of how I'm getting those um, highlighted areas on the cloud, if anyone's curious. No, probably most of you who are working digitally already know this stuff, but if anyone's new to digital art or thinking about getting into digital art, that is one of the uh, benefits there. Let's color the bison. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Going back to Casual Geographic's cat video. <laughs> uh, that's actually what Bob Ross, I mean, Bob Ross was, I mean, he, he did really like basic, easy to follow stuff and he's using a lot of basic paint techniques. Like that's, I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. This is like very well known. Um, it's just, uh, sometimes, I don't know. I guess it just depends on like your level of proficiency, right? Like if you're, if you're, like I said, if you're new to digital, you, it just may not occur to you that you can even do that, especially with uh, like pen pressure. Like if you're not used to how that works, um, it's very different obviously than real media. But yeah, I'm probably, probably stating the obvious for, for quite a few folks. That's okay. I'm, I'm happy to be an obvious, an obviousness stater. I'm not sure that's how I want to say that either way. So all I really did was uh, put the sketch on a different layer, um, again, for anybody who's new to digital and um, lowered the opacity. So opacity is like how see-through something is. So something that is opaque. Um, I actually used to get this mixed up when I was a kid. I thought opaque meant see-through, but it means the opposite. <laughs> so the more opaque something is, um, the more solid it is and the, the, the lower the opacity, then the, the more transparent it becomes, you know. So most digital programs have an opacity slider that you can adjust. Makes it easy to kind of do stuff like this, like under drawings and then paint over stuff. Although technically I am painting under this still, it's not really a, I'm doing an under painting, but it looks like an under drawing. Now I will go back in and darken these browns, but I just kind of want to lay in my values here. Funny little dewlap there. Um, he only blends the bottom of the cloud. Yeah, sometimes depending on the cloud though, I do that the opposite way. So that, I feel like bit blending the bottom, I mean, I guess that could be a cumulonimbus. I actually, I actually do starker lines. I'll do a little cloud demo before I go, if you want to see what I'm talking about, but I want to finish this first. We'll see. Maybe I'll do it later. <laughs> see what I end up drawing on stream tonight. Um, I sometimes do it the opposite where the, the hardest part is the bottom. Because, you know, there's some clouds, I'll just do it now, let me think about it. There's some clouds that, that's not right. Why isn't that working? Like, especially when, depending on the angle you're looking at the cloud, like if they have that really flat bottom, it's not gonna look right on this pale background at all. But sometimes I'll blur the inside basically and leave that, that stark edge on the bottom. Let's put some blue in there so you can see what I'm talking about. 
Um, and then I'll come in and like fill out the highlights on the cloud. This, I'm not used to this brush at all. So this will be, it's really hard to tell probably on the screen. That background is so pale. Anyway, I think it just depends on what I'm making. And especially if you want to look kind of stacked. But this is like more of a probably like animation way of doing things. Um, Anyway, it can also work with the uh, Thunderheads too. Alas. Um, better get ready for your appointment. Hey, yeah, go do what you gotta do, Kudo. Uh, thanks for hanging out, appreciate it. Uh, it's good info for me, I might never use the knowledge, but hey, that will, there you go, I'm glad somebody learned something. <laughs> if you ever do decide to pick up digital art, um, I guess I thought you did a sketch, um, the other day. I thought, I guess I thought it was digital. Was it, I'll look at that again. I may have just assumed it was digital. Oh no, yeah, that's definitely traditional. I don't know why I thought that was digital. Huh. Well, if you ever decide to pick up a, there's a lot of free art programs if you ever want to play with it. Although again, it is hard if you're just using a mouse, but uh, things like Krita would be really good. Right, I'm going to stop coloring in the feet so much <laughs> because if you notice, uh, he's really like really, really clear right there. Really dark colors and shapes. Oh, too much, too much. Um, and then he kind of gets more faded into the background as that mist is kind of overtaking his hind legs. Not mist, I keep saying mist. The dust that he's throwing up. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to hold true to that. Um, yeah, take care, take care of yourself, Kudo. Hope the appointment goes well. I understand uh, the frustration of appointments, so hopefully it's all good. Very disruptive to your day sometimes. He's so yellowy. I'm not having trouble getting that color. And stronger too. There it is. Found it. Found it. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm just gonna texture this in and smudge it around.
another fun fact uh, when you see the white probably most of you know this but showing just a little bit of white around an animal's eyes can make them look pretty scary it tends to mean they're uh, agitated I love his beard so much, you guys. It's like the best. Look at that beard. Look at that majestic scruff. Probably could have made my life easier by uh, drawing all this on a separate layer and keeping it separate from the painted background, but that's definitely another another good technique if you're doing digital work. But alas, I did not make that decision, so it's just all one layer painting here. I, I like making my life harder, clearly. One day I'll be smart about painting. One day, but not this day. Find you, break those chains that bind you. Remind you how I touched you when I set the grace all the hurts you won't deserve you. I still love you. Very loose color study, but uh, approaching the end of it here. I'm just gonna toss some more of these golds up top and uh, probably call this one. I didn't realize it was already almost one, which is way later than I planned on streaming. So I'm just really into this right now. And I figure even if I got a stream right now, I'd probably keep working on it just to get it done. So I'll just stay on until it's done. But uh, just in case this is anyone's first sketch stream, they are usually not this long. They usually start at 10. My goal is to end around 1130. I guess this week I have been going about noon, but uh, this should not be the norm. <laughs> I just got too caught up, right? There's just like way too many ungulates to choose from. I got to make sure to never be that big again <laughs> with the topic. So like I keep saying, we're all learning, guys. <laughs> I am maybe more than anyone. 
definitely was uh, too broad with this topic. We'll not be making that mistake again. I'm gonna try and be hyper specific on the future topics. Oh, speaking of future topics, um, if anyone's curious, I do have the schedule posted. Uh, there's a schedule command you can look at or you can go to the schedule section of my Twitch here. Um, we're doing dinosaurs next week because next week is apparently dinosaur week. Um, and the, I guess the capstone, even though it's right in the middle of the week is uh, Tuesday, which is draw a dinosaur day. So if you are wanting to draw dinosaurs, you gotta make, even if it's not with me, you know, gotta make that your day. That's a big one. So please do, please do draw a dinosaur to celebrate. I know I will be. I may even, I may even, I haven't decided yet how I want to do it <clears throat> for Tuesday. I'm doing a special stream on Tuesday to celebrate. So I will be drawing, or doing a 4 p.m. stream Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. So next week is going to be a very stream heavy week for me. So that's part of why I need to go because I got to make sure I get my schedule cleared enough that I can actually do that without stress anyway. <laughs> be like, oh shoot, I should really be doing this other thing. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll be doing, let's see, I think, I don't know if I put this much detail on the stream schedule, if you go look at it, but um, I believe the order I'm going in is going to be sauropods on Monday, which these are very general, so I'm going to land myself in some trouble again, probably, but I, I already have some some animals picked out this time, so I'm, I'm prepared for this one. <laughs> uh, this one, not so much. I've been troubleshooting my tablet at home when I get home from streaming and from studio stuff, and I just haven't haven't been making the time to plan for this, but I will. Anyway, I digress. So Monday will be uh, sauropods. Tuesday will be seropods. And these are the warm-up streams. So these are what we'll be doing in the morning. Um, we'll just be studying those kind of basic body types. Um, seropods, kind of a general group, but I'm definitely going to be doing a Parasaurolophus because that's my favorite dinosaur. So just know ahead of time, that's what I will be drawing. You don't have to if you don't want to. And uh, then theropods will wrap us up on Wednesday. So yeah, depending on your favorites, you might show up for certain ones, I guess. You don't have to, you don't feel like you have to sketch all of them if you are trying to challenge yourself and sketch along with me. That's never the goal is to stress anyone out. But if you want to, those are the things I will be focusing on for those streams. So I'm looking forward to that, it should be fun. And then for my special stream on Tuesday, we're just gonna keep that one a little surprise. Celebrate Dinosaur Day. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I may, I may, I guess a little teaser. I haven't quite decided if I have time. I do kind of want to work on some more dinosaur stickers, so I may end up doing that on Tuesday. But I have some ideas for some other stuff I could do. We'll just, we'll just see how I feel. All right, let's uh, let's rough in this this grass and cloud stuff and call this one done. Uh, cloudy up this stuff a little bit. I know there's some like shapes back there, but I don't really, hmm, maybe I'll just do a little bit of a grayish, just to show some variety back there. Just pretend, just pretend. Mm -hmm. We're pretending that you can see the sky. You can't. We're pretending. Gets us our drinks for free. And the light of the smoke, some place that he would be. I believe this is killing me. Ran away from his face. Could be a movie star. I could get out of this place. Alright, hopefully that gives the impression of trees without being too too in your face. Yeah. 
Love the uh, highlight of white right there. It's really fun. Practicing politics slowly but strong. But I'm drinking alone. Yes, the song of the piano man. All right. Oh yeah, grass. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Got really caught up in the fun parts. Grass can be fun. I need to find a way to make grass fun. Ooh, I should have grass. I already, I'm, I've already got uh, like foliage and trees and stuff like shrubs on the list. Things to practice, but I think I'm gonna add grass because there's different types of grass, right? Get your lush green grass. You got this stuff. Those are the types. Now there's lots of types. And lots of ways to render. So at, at some point these streams are gonna gonna lean out of just straight up like pencil rendering and kind of go more into um, you know like painty stuff like this. Like I, I really do, especially when we do like the elements one. Like when we do like fire and ice and water and all that stuff. That's definitely gonna be. It's gonna have to be more color focused because um, yeah, color color brings a lot. Exactly. Oh my gosh, Anthony Wheeler Art. Hello. I am uh, shocked to have you in here. I was talking to uh, to Babe last night. I'm just kind of getting back into streaming here on um, here on Twitch, and uh, she told me that you were on Twitch, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've followed him on Instagram for a long time, but I didn't know didn't know he was here. I'm surprised to see you in here. <laughs> Thank you for stopping in. We're just doing some uh, warm up sketches. And uh, I'm kind of wrapping up here. We did, um, I guess I can show you what we did. We're just doing studies. I've got a discord where I drop some of these references and people can sketch along if they want. I'm practicing ungulates today. Definitely leaned into the uh, bovine without meaning to. Uh, and this is kind of like a build up that we've been going through all week. I'm just kind of coloring one that I thought was fun. Um, did equines, cervids earlier this week and then last week we have week one here first week i did it um just, it's a new thing i'm trying um, but i just need to be drawing from reference more so that's why i'm doing it but we did birds of prey and we did big cats and then on wednesday last week we combined what we learned into a griffin using reference right so still had some of i do a lot of creature design for fun um so i can't can't stay away from it that long unfortunately but anyway how are you um back to my story <laughs> sorry i just felt like i should explain uh, yeah, I was talking to Babe and she was like, oh, you know, he, you should follow this dude. And so I did, because <laughs> I was like, oh, I see your, um, your sketch parties and stuff on Instagram sometimes. And I saw that you're coming out with a game, like a card game soon, right? Oh, well, thank you. That's so kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the shout out. I mean, seriously, you guys should go, go follow Anthony Wheeler. He's a, a real pro. Um, Part of why she recommended, I'm trying to get into the book illustration industry and she was like, oh, you should follow this guy because he does that. And um, that's how I, yeah, that's how I ended up following you last night. I'm, I'm, wow, I'm like flattered that you even like followed up on a follow notification. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really cool. Great to have you. How's your day going? I'll have to check out one of your, um, oh, ignore the motorcycle deer. I'll have to check out one of your, um, sketch streams. They sound really fun. I didn't, yeah, I just, I, like I said, I've followed your work for a while, but I didn't realize that you were a Twitch streamer. So I was kind of like pleasantly surprised as I'm trying to like get more, like meet more art streamers here on Twitch. So you'll probably see me in one of your streams eventually. I used to stream back in like 2018. <laughs> it's been a really long time. So a lot of the people I used to follow aren't really streaming anymore. And so I'm kind of, I feel like I'm starting over a bit, but that's okay. It's been fun so far. So you draw horses, but only mind horses, no reference allowed. <laughs> oh, 
that's awesome. Yeah, she mentioned you guys do some some streams. Your two year stream anniversary is in February. Oh wow, that's awesome. Okay, so you're kind of a newer streamer, sort of. Then, I mean, you've been doing it for a while. That's cool. Yeah, it was just like I didn't think. You know how Instagram is, though. You don't really get to know everything that's going on <laughs> with the people you follow. So I'm sure you've posted about it, and I just missed it. Um, yeah. Well, I, I do a lot of drawing from imagination, too, for sure. Like, you can see the little roster of illustrations down there below. Um, but I feel like I always mean to start with warm-up sketches from reference, because I think it's just a good way to fill that visual library and kind of know what things look like so that you can abstract them a little bit better. Uh, folks on stream are like rolling their eyes because I've said that multiple times on the stream. <laughs> uh, I really do think it's valuable for sure, but but yeah, I, I'm excited to to try out your uh, little little sketch games. She said you do them on Fridays, the the big ones, right? I'm I'm I need to go look at your schedule. I could probably just go find that out. Let's let me catch up on chat a little bit. I think I missed some folks. Um, the colors are looking nice. Oh, thank you. Really emphasize the musculature. Yeah, that's why color is so fun. And I, I sometimes like when I see a picture like this that has this much movement, it's like, how do you how do you not want to paint that? Like truly. <laughs> it's just the the gestural things you can get with color are so much fun. And yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a good practice for me. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie's Dragon. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Yeah. Now I'm only going to get your Twitch notifications on Instagram. <laughs> Chaotic Draw Along, that's what it's called. Yes, every Monday and Friday. If you guys are into fun prompts, go give them a follow and, and check those out. Uh, is it Monday and Friday in the evenings? I do stream Monday in the evenings, but maybe a, maybe a Friday if I get off work early. It's the sad thing about my life right now is I do have a part-time job, so it kind of gets in the way of a lot of my art goals sometimes, but I'm trying to make it all work. I'm trying to stick to a schedule this year and see how that works with uh, fitting it all in, so hopefully I'll be around. I'm not quite a... Uh, not quite making it making it work freelancing. Got tired. Really, I got tired of freelancing, so I took a part time job so I could stop freelancing. <laughs> and now I'm just trying to build up a portfolio of stuff. So it's part of what these are for, you know, making that uh, making that process a little bit more expedient, improving my skills, and whatnot. All right, I think I'm done fiddling with this. Yeah, if you're watching right now and you're looking for more kind of like prompt, prompty type things to do if you're new to art or if you're old to art and you just like drawing stuff with people, um, go check out go check out his streams. You'll probably see me there. I'll try and make it this Friday. I don't know. I think I have a late shift though. I don't get off till seven. And I have to draw along after the fact. All right, cool. The freelance guy, oh my gosh, no, I can't, like kudos to you. I, I was a teacher before um, and I freelanced for a few years when I first quit teaching and like moved out to Colorado to do this, but it's just, uh, I don't like the feast or famine. <laughs> it's too stressful for me. So uh, yeah, that's why the, I found a really great part-time job that um, pays full health coverage. And I, I only work there like less than 24 hours a week. So it's a, it's a good deal. I kind of just chalk that up to like time I would have spent, you know, taking commission work and, and working on that stuff. So it pays for health insurance and for the basic bills. And then if I need more in income, I can always open up commission work, but it's working for me right now. It's obviously not the long term, but yeah. One day I would love to do books and have that be the income source. But... Okay, fiddling, we're fiddling too much. Stop fiddling. Uh, we only want old people following the prompts. <laughs> I can't craft any more young people. <laughs> I didn't mean like old artists. Hopefully you guys knew what I meant, but that is funny. <laughs> only those old people, please. <laughs> These young whippersnappers. Am I too? I think I'm. I think I'm approaching the age where I can start saying that unironically slightly. 
When can you start saying, can you start saying that in your 30s? Or do you have to wait till you're like 50 or 60? What's the whippersnapper cutoff? <laughs> Open to thoughts. Open forum here. When is it weird to say that? <laughs> and when is it not? <laughs> I feel old with that dude, right? I, I'm right there with you, Charlie's Dragon. Are you in Colorado? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm in, um, I'm in Golden, just west of Denver. I'm in Golden. Yeah. 44, I think I can say it. <laughs> yeah, check the, check the old artist handbook for us, would you? Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> you can start saying that as soon as the youngins start irritating you. Oh, no way. That's, uh, that, I would have been saying that when I was much younger. I would have been saying that gosh, my early 20s, when I started teaching. <laughs> oh, teaching. They were they were right when they said, you know, if you were going to have kids, you should have had them before teaching, because boy, you're not going to want them after teaching. And they weren't lying. It's gotten better now. I don't know how I feel about kids anymore. But anyway, we're not talking about that. Point is, whip, young whippersnappers is definitely, if the annoyance factor is what it is, then that, uh, that definitely checks out. Yo, I'm near. No way! Oh my gosh, really? That's awesome. Do you? I might DM you later. <laughs> I've been looking for local artist groups uh, to meet up with. I just, I just feel like part of my battle is that I don't know anybody in the industry, and I'm sure they're around. Like I, you know, I'm part of Squibby and all that. Like, but I can't usually make the meetings because I work during the times that they. I work weekends, unfortunately. Um, it's a downside of my part-time job. <laughs> Still good. Still great to have the health insurance, but uh, yeah. If, well, anyway, I may I may reach out later if that's not too uh, too forward, or I'll, maybe I'll hop on your Discord and I don't know, whatever you prefer, or just say no. Say Casey, I don't know you, and that is too forward. <laughs> um, but I would love to know if you know of any like local art groups, like people who meet up. There was a plain air group that met in Golden for a while, and uh, before COVID, of course and kind of did some sketching. And then there was a group here in Golden that I was trying to go um, to like meet with regularly that was doing some like free stuff at the art center, but I think that kind of petered out. So anyway, I just would like to know more, more people to art with locally. <laughs> I've got three kids each in elementary, middle, and oh man, you got one at each stage. Whew. That's a rough time. You'll get through it. You'll get through it. Yeah, I was an elementary school art teacher um, for about five years out of college. So that's my training is education, but I've always done this for fun. So just trying to make it a thing now. We'll see. We'll see. But man, you are so close. I had no idea. I wonder, did I, I wonder if I originally met you at a convention. I used to do, I used to con do tabling at like Denver Comic Con and some of the local cons. I haven't done it since 2019. It took a break in 2020 and then 2020 happened. So it worked out, but I haven't gone back. I actually got a bunch of, I don't know if you guys can see, that's on my, my con inventory. Um, I've been going through it lately. I'm trying to decide if I want to get back into that this year or not. It's kind of an investment in a lot of ways, but anyway, I wonder if I met you there. Because I, I know I'm, I can't remember how I came across your work. Got a nice crew of friends of you right here. Nice, nice. I've, I know some people in Salida and some people through like Squibby and I've got like a crit group and stuff. But anyway, I mean, if you know of any like clubs or groups that gather, I don't want to like intrude on, you know, personal art friends, but just, I'm just looking for like, you know, sketch groups and art meet, like local art meetups. Maybe I just need to organize one. I don't know, but I don't know who to reach out to. That's the problem. <laughs> anyway. All the Squibby folks seem to live up in Boulder. Like everybody I meet through this, for those who don't know Squibby, sorry, it's a Society of Children's Books, Writers and Illustrators. So if anybody out there is watching this and you're thinking about doing children's books or honestly just publishing in, in any sense, I think Squibby is a super helpful resource. Um, really, really beneficial organization. But all the people I seem to meet are either like way, like way off on the outskirts of Denver or they're up in Boulder. Like nobody lives out here. <laughs> oh shoot, I'm drawing on the wrong layer. Why do I do that all the time? Ah, look at all those little yellow spots, guys. They're on the wrong layer. Hold on, Can I, how, long, how long ago was that? Pretty long ago. Oh well, it doesn't matter, just a sketch. There, 
Those ads available right there. There we go. Nice and shiny. Walls. You've tabled quite a bit. Okay, I bet, I think I may have met you at a convention. I'm not sure. I also do a podcast with a crew that specializes in kidlit. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what Babe had mentioned. Yeah, she said that you, you did those things. I need to look into it. I've got a whole list of, a whole list of things I need to look into with resources for that. I try to listen. I think right now the only kidlit podcast I'm kind of listening to is uh, three point perspective, you know, the SVS guys, but I'm honestly so behind on that. Anyway, All right. Well, since, uh, since we're here and then, uh, Giuseppe, Giuseppe, what's his last name? You probably know who I'm talking about. He does a big illustration podcast. Why is that on that layer? Oh, I see what I did. Yeah, I'll check it out. Thanks for thanks for the tips. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Hope you're enjoying this uh, slightly warmer weather that we're having lately <laughs> compared to what we had a week ago. I know I sure am. I had to move all my studio's tech to my house last week and then move it back or before last week. Anyway, it was a nightmare. good friends with them. I heard that Lee had moved to Denver. I don't really, I've met him. I don't even know if I've met him in person. I've met Will um, at a convention and I, I've met Jake, but I know they're, they're like down South now, but I had heard that Lee had moved to Denver and I was, yeah, he seems really cool. I always like what he has to say on those, on that podcast for sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm just, I mean, I just want to meet some, some people to like sketch, sketch with and kind of, yeah, get connected to the local, whatever local art communities are, because I have not had success finding them in Golden, sadly. They just, all, the only people I'm finding are people who like do more of the art fairs, like art, like art and craft fairs, you know, kind of artists, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just not what I'm doing. Um, it's not, I don't have any interest in going that route. <laughs> Long time to make enough product to go that route. So yeah, I'll probably uh probably shoot you a DM later. That's okay. But thank man, thanks for stopping by. It's great to great to like meet you. Maybe re meet you. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. I just know I've followed you for a while. And I'm honored to honored to have you in my stream, my little humble stream. Oh, he's in Highlands Ranch. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He seems like he's liking Denver. He's another one that like Instagram does not want to show me his posts. Like I have to go searching for his posts. And so I feel like I'm missing a lot of stuff. It's very, uh, so frustrated with Instagram. I'm very ready. I think we're all ready for like an alternative social media platform where you don't have to fight an algorithm that changes every six months. Anyway, I'm not going to go on that rant. It's almost as bad as the AI rant. Oh, shoot. But yeah, Babe was showing me your, uh, the card game that's coming out for your, uh, your prompt, your prompt game. It looks like a lot of fun. And I do remember seeing, a, I think I saw a reel on Instagram about it as well. Looks like a good time for sure. All right, let's let's paint this sable boy. We learned today that uh, sable antelope are apparently more closely related to cows than they are to uh, I don't know other ungulates. <laughs> Did not know that. Blew my mind. Apparently, they're not even really antelope. Like, I just thought they were in the same category as everything else. So, surprise. Yeah, it's so fickle. So fickle.
I was afraid to go too dark on these. Oh well. If you can't see this, I'm sorry guys. I promise I'm coloring it and not just coloring everything black. I'm trying to do a light gray, a warm gray here. Um, but yeah, thanks to everybody who sketched along today. I'm kind of wrapping up here. Um, I'll be back on later at 4 for my usual 4 p.m. stream. Um, shoot, what are we doing today? I don't remember. And then, like I said, uh, next week is Dinosaur Sketch Week, so if you want to come warm up with some dinosaur sketching, I'll be doing that uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 10 a.m. until whenever I stop, apparently, because I was supposed to stop like two hours ago and just haven't. I appreciate everybody who hung out and uh, brought the good convo, and it was nice to, nice to see you in here, Anthony. Thank you so much. Again, if you guys aren't following him, go give him a follow. Does a lot of good stuff. Very fun, very fun prompt game that I'm definitely going to try and join in on. Oh, shoot. Uh, I know what I'm doing later today. I, so I'm, I'm doing some portfolio thumbnails, but I'm actually, I think I'm going to try and enter a contest. <laughs> Another Twitch streamer here that I, I follow and have for a while is an education streamer. His name's Science Streams. If you like science and ants, go follow Science Streams. <laughs> Uh, he's a nice guy, and he's he's also got a Twitch anniversary going on. I've been chatting with him and hanging out on his streams for a while, so I figured I would uh, do a little contest entry to uh, help him celebrate. Should be fun. We'll be uh, drawing an anthropomorphized fungus, <laughs> so if you want to come see that. Um, I might also finish my sea slug dragon design that I started last Wednesday, just because I want to. We'll see what I have time for, but um, that's the plan. That's the current plan. So if you are into any of that, guys, come on back at 4. That's when I'll be back on, but I am going to... Put the final little marking touches on this boy and call it for now. So I need to go do some other things before that stream tonight. Oh, tax season. <laughs> Such a joy. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks, Amaze. Wow, you're so fast. As always, Amaze. Like, top-tier mod right there. Um, appreciate you. Yeah, there's all my socials if anybody wants to... Uh, wants to go go hang out there, check out any of those things. I think we'll go out on uh, these two guys. These were fun. I like color. Um, it's one of them. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> very kind indeed. And it's, it's great to, to connect with you. I will, yeah. I'm a, I know I said it was finished, but it's bothering me that I didn't color his eyes. So there we go. Now he has a, now he has a soul, guys. There we go. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's not a soulless antelope. There's other details I could add, but I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm gonna get caught up in this. Okay. Let's see if there's anyone um, online right now. I've been trying to be better about raiding. Okay. So thank you for reminding me to raid. Uh, you know who you are. And uh, yeah. Let's go see if there's another artist. I tend to try and do family friendly artists. So if you are somebody who's watching with kids, I know I have a few uh, folks that do that. Um, I am. The, I do try to honor that and just do art streams. Oh, you know what? Let's do. I was hanging out in her stream yesterday. Uh, this is an artist, like one of the few artists I used to follow and chat with a lot that is still streaming. Um, probably some of you know them. Uh, they're pretty, I think they're pretty big. Uh, Zikawa, I think is how you say it. Um, but she looks like she's on right now. So let's, I was just chatting with her yesterday. So if I can remember how to do this, guys, I'm telling you every time I forget how to do the raid thing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. My Twitch noob is showing, hold on, don't look. Don't look yet. Okay, I found it. Stream manager. Here we go. Good grief. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, if you guys want to hang out with me, I'm going to go raid in for just a few minutes um, into the stream. Um, she's really sweet. And uh, see if I started it. Did I start it? Yeah, I did. Okay. So it's been great hanging out with you guys. And I'll see you maybe again at four. If you are around, I'll be doing um, some creature design stuff, some illustration stuff, you know, working up some thumbnails, that kind of thing. So if you want to come hang out for that, you'd be more than welcome. I'd love to have you. But if not, that's okay. And thanks for those of you who sketched along with me. I'd love to see them in Discord if you want to drop those in there or on Instagram or whatever. Hashtag KC sketch along is the hashtag I'm using. Uh, so yeah, until next time, guys, we'll, we'll catch you later. Yeah, yeah, take care. Take care. Bye.